let me tell you guys something right you cannot open up a shop and think that you're going to be rich your main objective should not be money repeat that again mm. no it should not be money a lot of shops be talking shit, like and i know this because a shop owners will come here talking shit about other shop owners that's what happens all the time and they'll say it to me too and i'm just the camera, just guy. The camera yeah, guy it's like yo like everything is numbers and math right you gotta track what it is that you do a month for you to know what you got to do for the future when i wake up and it's mondays i got six days to make x amount of money to then pay my employees if i can't pay them there's no hope in the business Welcome back to another episode of the Street Alpha Podcast. I am your host, Tooks. And today we got my guy, Ray, here. Yes, sir. Ray.NYC. That's right. So oh, those yeah. earlier episodes that you guys saw, 45, Shaq, that was uh, with, with Mar. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about how to start a detailing business, Mar's background, because we all know Mar works hard. He busts his ass every day. That's a fact. Um, and even when I'm calling him, he's either washing a car, vacuuming a car, or doing something related to... Uh, detailing. So we're going to talk about how he made his way up to open up a shop. So I'm going to learn a lot today. We're all going to learn today. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure he's going to talk some shit because, you know. Before we start the podcast, I do want to say something though. What's up? For everyone that's watching the podcast, I need you guys to understand and give a lot of credit to this man, Tooks. Oh, I didn't even know you were going to yeah. go. Oh, right. <laughs> lot, I'm like, what are you about to say? To I'm we set up a whole bunch of equipment. The man has to drive 30 minutes from. Yeah, I'm going to bleep that out. But yeah. yeah. Hot, well, <laughs> he has to drive far from wherever he's coming from to here to set up. He has all his equipment. He paid off for his equipment. All the editing, all the shooting is done by him. So we also got to give you your flowers. Shout out to Tooks, I appreciate Tooks, that. Man. Appreciate that, bro. Shout already, out. bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, do you feel cool with that introduction? Because. I mean, yeah, I'm cool with that. Know. I'm cool All with right. that. So um, before we get into that, right? So a lot of you guys are going to be seeing um, this setup more so. I'm not really sure if Ray's going to be here a lot, but if he is. I'll drop in. I'll drop okay. in. Okay. If we can get Ray on as a co-host as well. I mean, there's really no set co-host besides Mar, but um, people can, you know. Yeah. Podcast is always going to be different guests um, or people who, who help host. So it's never going to be a set amount of people. Yeah. But this from now on is going to be at Minty Shop possibly at checkmate for rare episodes just because of some of the cars that may be on the show might be closer to that area but for the most part you guys are going to see a lot of the podcast episodes filmed here so this is now headquarters i guess we can call it yes. for um the street alpha podcast um this is where it all started honestly so um appreciate you giving your space of course in order bro. for this to happen of course um i'm hoping it's helping out some way yeah it definitely is it got a lot of followers you yeah. know what i'm saying good that's good so i'm definitely. sure you're gonna get more followers with this because you're gonna have a lot of gems for yeah detailing let's get into <laughs> the episode so you started at the stand shop i believe right with keith initially we could, we could go a little deep a little further a little further back that. yeah so. all right so how'd you how'd you get your start into detailing um i always had a passion like for cleaning cars you know what i'm saying okay. um before I was, before I met Keith, um, I was working at Infinity. Infinity de dealership. Yeah, the okay, dealership. I, I started off there. What year was this? Twenty seventeen, I think. Twenty sixteen. That's it. Twenty seventeen. Yeah, it's not that long ago. Damn. So yeah, I knew each other. That, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we knew each other. So, um, I started there. I was doing maintenance. That's what I got hired for cleaning. Um, I was there for like three months. The the manager, I guess, he dis he found out that I knew how to work on cars. He made me a lube tech. Probably about six months in, I was a lube tech, um, but I was doing like A tech work. I was doing okay. big work. So he wanted to send me to school to like become an A tech or a B tech, but I didn't really want to go to school. School's not really my thing. You know what Facts, I'm saying? I hate school too. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So, I agree. Um, I wound up staying there for I think like two or three years. Um. How I met Keith was I used to go to a meet. That's a, this is back in the days. This is my first car. I used to have a GTI. For anybody that know me, that's my first car. I had a GTI, like a 2002 GTI. I can't even see you in. I can't see you in a GTI or a Subaru. It's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Like, I, I think know. I'm. Well, you got. We got to start somewhere. I don't think you. Nah, you didn't meet me when I had no, a GTI. After, after. Yeah, when okay. I had the S2000. So once I got the, I went to this meet. It's called Euro Tuesdays or Thursdays. One of them. 
It was in um, Steinway at PC Richardson. Okay. Right across the street was Keith's shop, his first shop, right? Um, I didn't realize that it was his shop until I, I was walking somewhere to get, like, water or something, something to drink. Yeah. And then I noticed, like, a E46 in the shop. And then I noticed the shop. I'm like, oh, shit, that's Keith's shop. So I walked over there, and um, E46J was there. And Keith, like, he just did suspension on his car. So I was telling Keith, like, yo, like, yo, you know, I follow you on the Instagram. I respect what you do, blah, blah, blah. If you haven't. So you met Jay and Keith at the Jay same time. Jay and Keith wow. at the same time, bro. Yeah. That's the first time I met Jay and the first time I met Keith. Mm-hmm. So um, I told Keith, like, yo, if you ever need help, blah, blah, blah. Yo, let me know. I'm willing to work for free. I just want to learn. Like, I was so eager to learn, bro, about fixing cars because this is like my entry level into cars. Right. I was so eager to learn that. I didn't I didn't care for money. I just wanted the knowledge. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like maybe like a few weeks passed by. I think I DM'd them or text them or something like that. And I was like, yo, if you need help, let me know. Blah, blah, blah. Like, bro, I know he don't know me from a hole in the wall and he don't know my experience. And he works by himself. Right. Right. So I'm like, yo, bro, I'll come, I'll take off wheels if I have to. You feel me? Like, and I'll just watch you. I have some experience on working on cars because obviously I'm in a dealership. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I just really wanted to learn. So eventually, like, he, I pulled up. I think I just pulled up randomly, or he told me, like, yo, just come by. Blah. I don't remember what the conversation was. Came by. At this this point when I met him, I think he was just transitioning into the second shop. He was just moving. So I, I don't even Where think he's at I, now, right? Astoria, yeah. Okay. So I don't even think I gave, like, I don't even think I was at Steinway. I think I was at his Astoria spot. Um, So I was helping him. I would leave work. I, like, I get out of work at 7. So I'll leave work and go to the stand shop. Whatever he had going on, bro, I was either watching over him or just give him a hand. If he tell me, like, yo, pass him this wrench or pass him this mm-hmm. socket, yeah. I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? Eventually, he got comfortable with me doing certain things. Like, he'd be like, yo, put this put this car on the lift, take off the wheels. It started off like that. You know what I'm saying? As time went on, as time went on, it's like, yo, take this shock out or, yo, change these brakes real quick, change these brake pads. I really knew how to do alignments really well. I learned that at infinity. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The right so, way. Like, the right way. I was way. just about yeah. to say that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I literally know how to li- do alignments really good. Right. So um, it started off as me. Once he got his in-ground alignment, I was doing some alignments every here and there. Um, time went on. Time went on. Time went on. And he got real comfortable with me where, to the point where he would text me like, yo, you coming in today? This is me like at infinity already at 7 p.m. Like, yo, you stopping by today? I'd be like, yeah, I'll come. I'll come through. You know, we busting out work, bro. This times where we leave, I leave the shop at like twelve o'clock, eleven o'clock. I didn't really care. I like I like going there, and I love the fact that I was learning, and I was learning from somebody that I felt like could teach me what I really wanted to learn. Mm-hmm. And I was also around cool ass cars. You know what I'm saying? As somebody yeah. coming into the game, this was the perfect start for me. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's how I went. So, you weren't necessarily washing cars yet there nah i wasn't washing cars yet okay you're so, like an apprentice right? yeah Pretty like much. an apprentice yeah. yeah so what was the like what was the purpose like for you to like what was your mindset what was your goal because you wanted to get in there to learn but like were you trying to do detailing or you just wanted to do nah, anything with cars car wash wasn't even on my mind okay event like when i was at that stage i always thought that i would have been a mechanic i would open up my own shop and been a mechanic mm-hmm. the whole car wash thing was not not nothing ever on my mind like i wasn't worried about like washing cars at that time i wasn't even washing cars you know what i'm saying i wasn't thinking about detailing i wasn't my mind wasn't on detailing you know yeah. what i'm saying my mind was just you i'm a mechanic and i'm gonna be the best mechanic you so how long saying? were you a mechanic before you started doing the, the washing like how'd you get into the washing how i got into the wash how'd you find your your passion for washing cars washes so when I when I before Infinity, when I first got out of high school, I used to work at a uh, used car dealership in Brooklyn, detailing their cars. Oh, okay. some Jewish gotcha. guy, you know what I'm saying? I was the only one washing all the cars by myself, detailing by myself. I was young. I had a lot of energy. I had a lot of ambition. So I worked, but um, I just didn't like the way they treated me over there. So I was like, you know what? Fuck these niggas. I can say that, right, niggas? <laughs> yeah, you can say that, bro. I can say whatever. Yeah, so I said, fuck these niggas. And I ain't have a car then, so I would have to get up. My, I would have to get my ass up every day, get on the train, go all the way to Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yo, fuck this shit. Eventually, I got saved up, got myself a little car, whatever, so I was able to move around. 
um how the whole car washing thing came about was um there used to be a guy in there that used to come um he had his little section in the shop my boy paul he used to he had a, his nine to five or whatever he would used to uh leave from his job and come to the shop and wash cars or whatever and um when he wasn't there i would wash my own car yeah you know what i'm saying it, it came to the point he was there but he wasn't as he wasn't there enough you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying i was there more i was i was i think at that time i like i quit infinity and i was at the stand shop full time so when he wasn't there i would wash my own car i always i always had a passion for a clean car i always liked to see my car clean at this time i just got the s2000 it was a little hurt but listen i was gonna keep it clean <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying so so you know people that was in the shop while we worked on their cars or whatever they were like yo i could get a wash it started off as like the people that worked there like keith yo wash my truck for me real quick i give you da 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 and then gabe was working there i think it was just me me keith and gabe at the time yeah it was just us three at the time so gabe would be like yo wash my car for me real quick so it came down to the point where like other people would see me washing cars and they would ask me like yo how much is a wash or whatever the case may be so um yeah that's how that started off in terms of the washing so how did it start off at the shop though like because you cause from what i from what I, from my understanding is that you would wash cars like that would come in yeah so like while they were waiting or whatever, as time right? went on the washes itself started picking up for me i find myself using paul stuff eventually paul kind of like left the shop or whatever but like he still left certain things there to use or whatever the case may be so then i put like a little money together because i still wanted to wash my car I was there i think the stand shop was open six days a week so if i'm gonna be at the stand shop stand shop at that time was like the most popular shop you know what i'm saying so it's like i gotta keep my car clean because all of these lit niggas is coming to the shop so i got i know my <laughs> shit was out yeah you know yeah, what i'm yeah. saying so i gotta keep my shit clean so it came to the point where i i always wash my car like i always wanted to see my car clean so i found myself like washing my car too much to the point where a lot of people that would come there started asking me like yo let me get a wash yo how much is a wash da, 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 wash wash to the point where i would be washing a lot more cars than working on cars and then also i'm not gonna lie i slowed down on the mechanical work only yeah. because i find it to be mad annoying you know what's crazy? I watched all of this transition. Really? Yeah. 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 I like he, a did. Lot of people. he did. Literally. I remember literally. watching him walk into Keith's shop at like maybe 8 p.m. Still in his infinity uniform. <laughs> nah, for real. He really. <laughs> if this this is work. why Ray's perfect for and this then, podcast. Because yeah. Ray really seen the transition from from everything. Like yeah. everything. He, yeah. he, he shot like my first video. Off the iPhone, bro. Off the iPhone. Really? With a gimbal. With a gimbal. Yeah. I still have yeah. that video. It must have been 18, right? I think it was 18. Was. was it 18? Yeah, 2018. I think it was 2018. 2018, 2019. No, 2017. Oh, it was 17? Yeah, I still had the 46. It was it yeah. iPhone yeah. 11? Probably? I don't, I don't even know, know what The quality was so trash at that time. Oh, it was? Yeah, yeah. I still got that Maybe video. it was a 10. It was probably been. a 10. How old I, was, I, was it was? Always, uh, I was always behind with the new iPhones. Always. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, it was probably yeah. a 10. Man got money. Home, he had a home button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a home button. <laughs> um so yeah i feel like a lot of people have seen your growth and i think that's why a lot of people fuck with you is because they see how hard you worked and they see where you started from and they see where you're at now so yeah and even still progressing so you got a lot of support yeah yeah, um, yeah. that's how i actually i feel like i gravitate more towards um you know working with you because you have that similar mindset that i have ambitious driven yeah and you stay focused you're not you're not distracted you're not out partying clubbing i mean i'm sure you go out every now and then yeah yeah, yeah i do but work comes first no nah, of I'm course saying? of course i gotta go at what point up. did you feel like you knew like this is it this is it for me yeah in terms like, of detailing detailing um once i open a shop once you open the shop once i so open a shop before that you had doubts not doubts but i didn't take it serious mm. i didn't know to be honest if i was to look back like if i was to see myself five years ago from now i wouldn't think that i'd be doing this I wouldn't think that I'll be detailing or I'll be washing people's cars or I would have a shop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just knew that I wanted to do something. Right. And something that not everybody do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I sat down in my room with like three or four of my closest friends and I told them my game plan. I was like, yo, I'm going to buy a car. <laughs> I'm going to make it lit. And I'm going to make a name for myself and I'm going I'm to open a mechanic shop. That's what I told them. I was like, yo, I'm going to open a mechanic shop. My mechanic shop going to be lit. 
it just transitioned into a detailing shop. Yeah. But it's like, I have a goal, bro. Once I say, if anybody know me, once I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Same. It may take me some time, but I'm going to do it. Like, I don't yeah. care what it is because I don't find nothing to be impossible. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's like, yo, set goals and get to them shits. Now, do you miss it? Working on cars? Nah, hell no. <laughs> hell no. Yo. Hell no. Yeah, no, I don't I think don't anybody, I feel like that's, you got to be, you got to have a certain level of patience to work on cars. Even now, mm -hmm. yeah. when you get older, bro, you don't want to be on the ground getting dirty, getting your, I mean. I mean, you can even have me. a lift and it's just. It's, it's, still, it's still the same thing. Even with a lift, you still got to, you know what I'm saying? It's, to me, I, I ain't got time for that no more. Nah, yeah, bro. That's what made me lead more into the detailing because while I was at the shop, like, we could put coilovers on a, like, we could, the customer would come in. I'll ask them, like, yo, how low you want the car to go? Yo, make it low like your car. Make it low like my car. They go up the block. They scrape one time. Yo, it's too low. Raise it up. I'm a I, victim of that. I don't get paid to yeah? raise it up. Yeah, he put, he put my coilovers on the M4. I was like, yo, bro, just, just make it as low as your car. Try to back out of the, the last shot. Supreme, shop. yeah. Supreme. Yeah. Why his car, though? There was no other car that was low? My car was low. My car the was S2000. low, low. Yeah. yeah That's that, what I'm saying, that bro. You didn't ground. see that shit in person, bro. My shit was low. You didn't mess no fenders up, nothing. Nah, nah. That's crazy. I think I messed one fender up. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I messed one fender up. But otherwise from that, nah. Nah, bro. That's I knew how to dial my, my shit in. More lock. Yeah, for <laughs> real. For real. So, all right. So you opened up the shop, right? Yeah. How were you able to fund opening up a shop where'd you get the money from did you have investors did you do it yourself nah no investors you start mobile detailing first nah, to get no mobile i did okay. it myself so i'll tell you a little bit before the shop before like I'll, I'll go back to the stand shop so i'm at the stand shop transitioning into a detailer and not a uh, mechanic i'm now busy with the washes i'm not able to tend to the mechanic side of the business you know what i'm saying I, which i didn't want to like again I just don't have time for the complaints or oh, my car's too low or hair noise. Like people will come and put take off their stock suspension, put aftermarket suspension and then complain about noise. Like, yo, you took off what was factory and put on something that's not factory. Facts. Why are you complaining to me about noise? <laughs> A lot of Facts. people do not understand that. Yo, if you take your cars to get modified, do not expect OEM. Do not mm -hmm. expect the car to perform or sound the same like yo mm -hmm. you're taking what's built for the car off and putting something else on it mm -hmm. off off like <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying like that shit used to get me so tight it's like to under and then it's like yo people bring these old ass cars they don't they don't they don't maintain their cars you know what i'm saying bolt snap or this shit just fucked rusty, up something seized. you can't Ooh. control that bro yeah so that's a headache for me i it came to the point where it's like yo bro i don't want to do this shit yeah what am i doing this job to make a hundred dollars for what the fuck to hear you complain or to for you to dm me or bash me for a hunt like for some shit that i did i had no control of <laughs> bro fuck that shit bro <laughs> so i wanted up leading more to the wash like a wash is like you can control a wash a wash is a wash mm -hmm. a wash is bad ain't nothing fucked up just a wash you could rewash that shit <laughs> for real i didn't yeah. vacuum the car right i revacuum that shit this is no harm no damage it's nothing mm -hmm. that is gonna cost me it's just my time you know what I'm saying? So I started leading more to the washes. Every now and then I'll do a little bit of both. I'll do the washes and the mechanic. Because I like, I like fixing cars. I like, mm -hmm. you know, something is broken or I like finding the problem out to something. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then I didn't. So mm -hmm. then it led more to the washing. I love to see a clean car. You know what I'm saying? I love to see a clean car. I love to see the end finish. Shit, you mean dirty? I love like you know testing my skills like, can i get the scratch out can i wet sand the scratch mm -hmm. out what can i use to get the scratch out um so it started leading more into the car washing so as that time started going on um the owner of the stand shop he was complaining to me about the water bill so then we we came to an agreement where i had to pay x amount of money a a, a month right um that only lasted like two months because he didn't give me access to the shop when i wanted it it was more so when he was open, when he was closed, we could be there. So it made no sense for me to pay. You know what I'm saying? So as as my wash stuff started building up, people, you know, would hit me up. 
one person in particular hit me up a body shop his name is anthony okay supreme collision concepts he hit me up he was like yo i see you doing your thing yo i'm about to open up a body shop if you wanted to like work out of my body shop you know rent free you know you just bring me customers and stuff like that to me it sounds too good to be true so i i didn't even pay no mind you know what i'm saying you had an instagram you were promoting in car washes like, yeah how i was you know? promoting the car washes originally my business was called i detail okay I it detail. wasn't even minty it was i detail you know what i'm saying i wanted something catchy like iphone i detail <laughs> yeah. you know what i'm saying so um he hit me up he was like blah 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 so i find it too good to be true some weeks passed by one of my friends got into a little accident i wind up hitting him up like yo you know i wanted to see what his work was it's like yo you want me at your shop and you want me promoting your shop and you want me to give you business i want to see the quality of work that you you know because at the end of the day i care about my name i'm not going to tell somebody to go here and i know they do shitty work i'm right. always going to tell you where i would take my car you know right. what i'm saying Facts. so he hit me up blah blah i hit him up i was like yo my friend got into a little buckle you know what i'm saying i was wondering if you could take care of it he's like yeah bro i got you i pulled up to the shop no lie this man fixed the car i think in two days with like zero complaints and i'm very anal zero complaints zero complaints bro he detailed the whole entire car for me he painted whatever then my man got like somebody backed up into him so we had to fix the door in the quarter did everything in like two days bro so i was so impressed that i was like nah this 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 is it like i love your work i f like i f i appreciated that you you put me before whatever you had going on because you finished the car mad quick so i was like you know what bro let's let's follow through this so i wound up leaving the stand shop going to supreme he had just opened he had just bought a property in um hempstead right and renovated the whole entire property you know and out he he didn't have no workers there this is like the summertime of maybe 2019 or something like that he didn't have no workers there so i was the only one there right he gave me keys man you this man don't know me from a hole in the wall gave me keys to his shop and I'm able to work fully out of a shop. Use his water, use his light, and he didn't charge me nothing. Nothing, not a dollar. He never asked me for a dollar. He never said, yo, Ma, this and that. So I said, you know what? I'm going to help you promote your brand. I'm going to help you push your brand because you helping me push my brand. You helping me build, I'm going to help you build. And that's always how I've been. You help me, I'll help you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's great to have. Yeah, nah, bro. I'm like that with all my people. I even have conversations with yeah, you where I'll be definitely. like, yo, yo, you got to do this. Yo, try that. Or like, yo, if you don't got nothing going on, you know, sometimes I have fire in the shop, pull up, shoot it. Yeah. You know, just post. That's what people want to see. Just con yeah. consistency. Facts. Consistency is key. It is. You know what I'm saying? Anybody in business that's watching this, consistency is key all the time. Like, if you want to be great, you have to be consistent. Uh, people that hit me up randomly, like detailers, yo, ha. I'm about to open up a shop or I'm about to do this. I only have one response. Stay consistent. Stay yeah. consistent and stay hungry. That's it. You know so, okay. So how long were you, how long were you at uh, Hempstead for? I was only at Hempstead for like a year because once he, because he was at a different spot in Hempstead. So once he moved his team and he was there in yeah. Hempstead, he started getting a little bit busy. So we would kind of bump heads on space. Right. Mm. So. I was getting busy. He was getting busy. So I came like, I was like, yo, you know what? I asked him. I was like, it was winter was approaching. So I asked him, I was like, yo, aunt, what's your plans with me for winter? You know, because I can't wash cars outside and the shop is mad small. What's your plans? He was like, yo, bro, honestly, I don't know. That was that was his exact words. Honestly, I don't know. I took that as a sign as yo, Ma, you got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? You got to do something because you're not going to be washing cars outside in the cold. And you blowing up too. Yeah. And. You know, a funny story that not a lot of people knew. When I was at the Hampstead location, right, it was me and uh, one of my one of my boys. He's like my neighbor. His name is Devante. He's still working now. I hired a homeless guy, right? I didn't know him from a hole in the wall. He used to sleep in a parking in a in a in a minivan in a parking lot at the body shop that I worked at. Mm -hmm. His name is Lucky, right? For some reason, like my energy like felt for him. You know what I'm saying? I felt like, yo, I, I can't help him, so I'm going to help him. Yeah. So I hired him. I taught him how like how to wash cars and this and that. Anybody that's the original, original minty niggas know, like, if you pulled up on me at Supreme and you seen an old nigga, his yeah. name was Lucky. 
Yeah. I see I see him sometimes around, sometimes here, sometimes at the old location. I see him every now and then. He be saying like, yo, what's up? But he was dead homeless. Like How's he doing the niggas now? Slept, huh? Yeah, How's I was gonna he say he's still, why he not working for Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that nigga used to steal not for me he used to steal he, he's just oh, okay. a jailbird you know yeah, you can't yeah. really do nothing with the jailbird you tried though I tried yeah. you know what I'm saying so it was us three working cars and then one of my men he, really, he wasn't really working my, one of my right hand men um, he wasn't really working um, I had him on board with me you know uh, so once Ant said like yo I don't, I don't really know what the plans are for you I took that as like, like yo, I gotta, I gotta step my shit up. Gotta I gotta find some, yeah, I gotta find some shit. So I went walking one day uh, to get breakfast in Hempstead. I was at Supreme still. I went walking to go get breakfast. I was just looking in the area, and right across, the, right around the corner from Supreme, there's a Honda dealership. Right across the street from the Holland dealership, there's a mechanic spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I walked over there. I'm just looking in the area. I'm like, yo, this would be a calm spot. So I winded up finding the landlord's number that same day. I spoke to the landlord, um, agreed on a price. I went to go actually see it in person. It was it was way smaller than this. Yeah. But I had to do what I had to do because winter was approaching. So I didn't give a fuck how small it was. I don't care, bro. Mm-hmm. I was just going to make it work. Um, I winded up going there and like, you know, pre in the spot or whatever. The day that I was supposed to sign my lease, I'm cleaning up the spot. I'm cleaning up the spot like, yo, I'm about to get ready. I'm about to get ready to sign this lease. I'm cleaning up the spot. I'm looking around, up and down. I'm like, damn, this spot is too small. I really got to think about growth. That wasn't really a factor in my head. Mm-hmm. So the landlord called me like, yo, I'm about to be there in 20 minutes. I was like, oh, I'm going to step out real quick. I seen this spot on Craigslist because even though I I technically got mm. that spot, I seen this spot on Craigslist. I'm like, yo, let me go check it out. You know, worst case scenario, whatever. I uh, left that spot, came down here, checked it out. Um, the landlord was actually here when I pulled up. So I was speaking to him. I told him what I wanted to do, blah, blah, blah. He was like, yeah, like you could come on board. Originally, he wanted like both sides. He was mm-hmm. trying to give it to me for like six thousand, so I didn't care, bro. I didn't really care about the price. I didn't care about nothing. I just wanted a spot. You know, once I got the spot, then I'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of thing with business, yo. It's like a lot of people are very fearful. You can't yeah. be fearful. You gotta just go in it all heads on, bro. It's like, yo, if you fail, you fail, but you never take know where jump. it's gonna go. Yeah, you gotta take that jump. But okay, so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how you were able to afford this. I'll tell you right now. So. And before that, where do you look for a spot? Because I found this on Craigslist. Okay, so Craigslist is a place where you can find a spot. You could you could go on Craigslist. You can go to Facebook Market, or you could go to a realtor. At that time, Craigslist was big. Now, uh, yeah. I would say Facebook Market. Yeah, Facebook, Facebook? Market yeah. is big. Because what do you type in though? Like, because this commercial, is the thing. like commercial spots for rent. But the problem is, a lot of these places probably don't even want mechanic work coming out of their shop because the chemicals and stuff like that. So, do you have to talk to nah, the landlords? Nah, or nah, you- nah. You see, when it comes to like if you're a detailing shop, it's it's different when you're a detailing shop and you're a car wash. When you're okay. a car wash, it's more high. It's more requirements. It's more like yo, this has Drains to be this and way. Stuff like that, and, yeah, drain. When you're a detailing shop, it's not. It's nothing like that. You don't. You don't need no. At least to what I know, to my knowledge, you don't need no license. You don't need none of that shit. Like, right. bro, you just washing a car. Like what? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's no chemical. As long as you have a drain, I feel like you Gucci. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, there might be some people who disagree because they might have certain in certain states or whatever. Yeah, they might yeah, have yeah. Different I know. Well, in terms guidelines. of Freeport, I know that I don't have no issues. I hope that right. you know, as we record this podcast, <laughs> the Freeport niggas don't come looking for me. But but people came here. Like somebody from Freeport came here. Da da da. They were saying some shit like, "Oh, you a car?" I'm like, "Miss, I'm not a car wash. I'm a de- This is a detailing center." Yeah. You know, Freeport is kind of strict about what they got going on here. I told them like, "Yo, I'm a detailing center." You know what I'm saying? This is what I do and blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody come here since. You know what I'm saying? To be honest, I make Freeport look good. I don't care what nobody <laughs> say. I be having all types of shit. Look at the background, y'all. I see they repaved the street. You got my 911 and a 98 uh, uh, M3. Like, if I, I traded I, in the Super, guys, just so you guys know. This is my new car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. All right, so how'd you get the money for this, bro? So Tell how me. I got the money for this is when I was at 
Supreme, obviously, I wasn't paying no rent there, so I was already stacking my money. I already mm. had like a little savings, but I winded up selling the S2000. How much you sell it for at that? What year was this? <sighs> this, I think this is 2019, if I'm not mistaken. It's 2019, damn. Would you, would you sell I like opened 25? during COVID. When was COVID? It was like 2019. Oh, 19, 19. 19, yeah. I opened, I opened November. November. November 19? 19. 19, yeah. Okay. yeah. That was like middle of. So everything. I sold my S2K for like. 25? Nah, lower than that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, AP1? AP2. How many miles were on it? Like 130 or 140. Oh, I don't that's remember. Why, yeah. yeah. I saw, I don't remember what I sold it for, but I know I just had enough money to probably open the 18, shop. 18, 17, something, or 18, something like 000. that. Something had along them lines. I had all I know is that I sold a car, I had money saved, I had enough money to open up shop. When you open up a shop, all you need is the first month, last month security. Depending on where you go, this is knowledge for, for anybody that want to open up a detailing shop, right? I'm gonna tell you right now. You have to once you find a commercial spot that you want. And they approve you of detailing. You got to let them know that you're a detailer. You're not trying to come in and become a car wash. You're a detailing center, right. right? You have to have first month, last month security. I think that was 12 k because the spot that I'm at right now was 4200 Then you also have to get insurance for the property. And that's it. And your credit got to be good. That's it. My credit was good. Had the money. When, once I met him, I told him I told him the same day. I think I had a thousand dollars in my pocket. I was like, "Yo, I'll give you a thousand dollars right now to show you how serious I was." Yeah. He winded up not taking it, but the next day, uh, we I, I gave him something. I don't remember what I gave him. I think I gave him half or whatever the case may be, just to show him how serious. Because he had to draw up the lease. He didn't want to take no money until the lease was drawn. But I wanted to give him money to show him that I was serious, that I really wanted to spot. So anybody that want to open up a detailing center or any type of commercial commercial spot. First month, last month security, and you have to have insurance. Insurance is not expensive. Insurance, How much is insurance? Insurance for a property, depending on where you go, I think our insurance is like two hundred for annual. Or? It's a thousand dollars for the month, and you can break that down into payments for the month or pay the whole thousand. Oh, that's not bad. Wait, a thousand dollars per month or a thousand no, a thousand dollars for the year. And then My you fault. break it down. A thousand dollars for the year, and you break it down. It's like two hundred dollars, like every three, two months or some shit. How like much? That. How much coverage do you get? How much money for coverage? Like how much? I think it's a million. Okay. I think so. Something like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my landlord actually plugged me in with somebody that he knew to got me insurance. So that's how I got insurance. I feel like if your landlord, if you, you know, your landlord is not an asshole, he'll help <laughs> you get insurance because obviously he wants to make his money. Right. right. And he wants to make sure his property is okay. So whatever insurance he had, he probably going to put you on like, yo, go to my man X, Y, and Z and he'll help you out. Yeah. So that's what I did. Got insurance, blah, blah, blah. So what's the monthly after? What was your monthly when your first few months or payments? Like, what were you paying on a month, monthly basis? For the spot? Yeah. Every month was 42. 4, insurance 000. included? No. Insurance was a one-time thing. So insurance was every, like, three months I would pay that. Ah, okay. That's like, like, every three months I would pay, like, two something or something like that. Three right. something or whatever the case. Five, but every whatever. month is 42. 42. Huh? But every month Every is month was 42 with a 5% increase every year. Okay. Without overhead, water, do you pay so utilities? water? Water is in the lease. I okay. only pay fifty dollars for water. Water that's doesn't, oh, water doesn't great. stay anywhere. That's Believe fire. it or not, I don't use that much water. Water is not expensive in Long Island. This mm -hmm. is Freeport. Freeport got its own water. You mm. know what I'm saying? This is its own town, so it's got its own water. So water is not expensive nowhere in Freeport, at least to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my water bill is only fifty dollars, but it's in my lease. It's been that way consistently since you woke yes, up. It doesn't go up. It doesn't go down. Fifty dollars for, $50. for a, you got a good deal if you ask that's me. That's crazy. Yeah. So, but how did you know you were able to afford this? Because forty two hundred dollars a month is pretty. That I didn't know. I didn't know that I would be able to afford it. But just gonna figure it out. That's not what I thought. I mm -hmm. didn't think. I didn't more so think like, damn. Like when I opened up, it was like, yo, you have to make this money. Yeah. With whatever you got to do, you got to sell your ass. You got to make this 4200 Pause, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do what you got to yeah. do. Oh, yo, man. once I opened up the first month and I was out. able. <laughs> nah, you can't take that out. Once I was able to open up, right, and I made the 4200 and had money left over to do my regular lifestyle living, I was like, oh, it's lit. I could yeah. do this all day long. Right. All day long. You feel so, me? So that deal happened within 24 hours of you packing and everything. What you mean? Because you said, because you mentioned that you were, you were meeting with 
oh the oh son over there yeah. yeah i just told him like yo you know the spot too small so it all happened within 24 hours pretty much the <laughs> um, deal so <laughs> i went <laughs> you was talking to the side of the mic i was like <laughs> once once i left that spot and mm -hmm. i came over here and i met with him and i i seen this spot how bigger it was right at a gate it was more of a on the main block the other spot was like in a cut i was like yeah this this is the deal that i want how did the last guy take it once you turned him he down? was just like yo i do cheaper or yo like this spot is not gonna work for you you know how much was the other spot though it was like two thousand, but Damn. i could only fit two cars two in there. cars right. it was no waiting room it was like okay, literally okay. a garage door. and how much does this fit this, this fit like, like working wise or like just store inside like let's say store Four maybe nah work if i had to store cars in here one two three four five, five cars five, five maybe cars. six That's maybe good. six maybe six depending mm -hmm. on the size of the car and it's it's high ceiling too is the yeah, other it's one pretty high pretty high ceiling i mean right now in the business that i'm in it's small for me you know i already mm -hmm. outgrew this like two months me into into being business like two months i already outgrew mm -hmm. this what year was it that you started opening up the shop? 19 19 november I feel like did I so damn so when I came here you were you were only open for about a couple months no way yeah because you came in the summer that summer 2020 summer I came in like February March or maybe April actually yeah April it was it was like not too cold the walls weren't even black yeah they weren't black wow yeah I just opened up when I met you damn bro yeah. I thought you was open for a minute nah everybody think that because of I feel like the volume Mm -hmm. not even that it's just like you had you had a, a system in place also like you would take photos of the cars post them like you were consistent with the with the post so i'm like oh, that's he's, what i said bro but wasn't it like a little a little minute before you actually opened? because i remember we came by to do a video with the e36 you parked both cars in here nah i think we was open then but you see um when i like when um i got the spot and i gave him the money it took him a minute for him to create the the, uh, the, the lease. lease agreement okay so while he was creating the lease he gave me access to the shop i couldn't work out of the shop because i didn't even have lights on i had to mm, like yeah i remember we filmed in yeah, the dark bro yeah i didn't i didn't even have dark. lights on so i had to uh wasn't it like one light right here swinging nah it was it was like that it was here? literally bro. a stand-up light a stand-up light that i had to get and um and work like that but he gave me access to the shop i told him i was like yo i need to start preparing myself like painting and doing all of this other shit mm -hmm. so he was like yo i give you access but you can't work until like december 1st or some shit like that i think i may i maybe got the spot like september he didn't he didn't give me access to the shop until november so i pretty much had to wait a couple of weeks or a couple yeah a couple of weeks to then finally open up you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, like once again, there was no electricity in here. I had to run like an extension cord for a light and this and that. So I, you know, got the painting and this and that, whatever the case was. And you know, I was just ready to open. So, what do you feel like you could have did differently um, going into opening this shop specifically? Do you feel like now with your knowledge, there's something that you could have did differently to to kind of you know learn from it? That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, because you said you pay forty two hundred. Do you feel like you could have went somewhere else? Maybe find yeah, a better location. Yeah, that's probably that's probably one thing that I felt like I could have done. I felt like I could have shopped around. Because at the time, you gotta remember, it's during COVID. Like everything was, in a sense, everything was for cheaper. You know, business was closed and everybody was scary. So I felt like I could have shopped around and probably found something more bigger for the price that I was paying. Or I felt like I could have. Um, negotiated the price a little bit better yeah. but he's he's a jewel and, you didn't negotiate at all i come on bro i <laughs> definitely oh, tried to say. To, i definitely try to negotiate i was like yo do 38 and four percent increase he just wasn't hearing it you know what i'm saying and once again at that time winter was approaching that's all i cared about because i already have a team remember i got the homeless nigga i got Devontae, and i got my boy wait the homeless guy made it over here yeah he made it over here for how like, long he stayed like a couple weeks. Did he wash my car? Nah, nah, nah. He wasn't here. <laughs> he wasn't here. He wasn't I, was, here. I knew some quarters are missing. Nah, he wasn't. He wasn't here. He wasn't here. Um, I winded up having to let him go. Like he, see him. He was. He was always in jail. You know mm. what I'm saying? So it's like he's, a, he's a lost case. Mm. You know, I tried to find hope or show him hope. He didn't see it. So, you know, I can't. But he did right by you though. He did right by okay. me. He did. He did right by me. But how were you, so how did you get a team? Because that's the biggest thing. And I think that when you start a business, that's probably the hardest thing um, to starting a business or even actually not even starting a business, more so scaling. 
because you can't do everything yourself. Nah, not so at all. So how do you, because I noticed that about your shop is that the people who work here are like super loyal to you. Yeah. And they're trust very worthy. disciplined, trustworthy, mm-hmm. um, and they're not doing stupid shit, you know? So how do you, how do you train your employees to kind of, you know, be disciplined the way they are? Um, I feel like, first of all, I feel like the name itself has a good name. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people come here, they fill out applications. Whether we hire or not, they want to be out. I get DMs all the time like, yo, you guys is hiring. A lot of people want to work here either for the clout or the amount of cars. We, what what type of cars we doing? Yo, somebody could walk through my doors and I could I could look at them without them talking to me, without them filling up out an application. I could tell whether they're going to last in my shop for a certain amount of time. And you can ask anybody. All of my receptionists know this. I always tell them like, yo, he's only going to last six months. Or yo, I'm not gonna even hire him because I know he's not gonna. And it sounds like it may sound fucked up, like I'm judging a book by its cover, but I could tell. And I'm usually 99% right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? There's people that are hired. I'm like, yo, this nigga's only gonna last a week, and he only lasts a week. <laughs> I'll tell him like, yo, stop being on your phone. That's the thing when, when, because I usually hire younger people because I want younger people to like. I want to show younger people like, yo, you can do this. There's not a lot of entrepreneurs out there, especially young. I'm 27. I started this business. I opened up my own doors when I was 25, I think, or 20, 24. Yeah. It's doable. Anyone can do this. Now, is there anything in specific you look for when people energy, come looking for a job? Energy. 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 Good question. You want to know who my best worker is? I'm going to shout him out. My best worker, what's his name, was Jay. Mm-hmm. You know Jay. Yeah. You know Jay too, light skin, Spanish school. Well, he, what's his Instagram? I'll show you his Instagram. He was I'll the show tallest you one. one here. I'll well, show what's his Instagram name? Uh, NYC Jay. Yeah. I don't know. Right now, Jay was my my best worker. Let me tell you why I hired Jay. Shout out to Jay. Shout out to Jay. I sh- I I hired Jay, and I tell him this, and we laugh about this. I hired Jay because what he DM'd me, the what what he said to me, why he DM'd me, while I was reading it. I asked him when he came, I was like, yo, did your mom write this for you? It was so professional for his age. He was only like 17, 18. So professional, bro. When I read it, I told him, I was like, yo, bro, can you come right now? So I want to meet you in person. I think he came that same day or if if not the next day. He lived in Brooklyn. Jay worked with me. I told him everything he knew. I think he worked from Starbucks. Had zero experience in detailing. Worked with me, worked with me. I gave him so much juice. To the point where he started his own mobile. Now he got his own shop. He got his own shop. He got his own shop. Yeah, in Brooklyn. he got his own shop. What? Yeah. Wait, why don't I remember Jay? If I show him a picture, you're gonna... the dancing dude? Nah, that's my cousin Devon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was a dancing dude yeah, that um that was my cousin Devon. Yeah, I got yeah, his face. like Jay. There's some other kid. His name is um Dante. He was working for a little bit. Oh yeah, Dante. He wanted up getting some knowledge. He started his own mobile detail thing. Yo, I'm not knocking nobody that comes here. Bro, and you learning. might have a little school here, bro. Bro, there's That's nothing wrong saying. with that, though. There's nothing. Bro, I don't mind giving out juice. Bro, anybody that DM me and ask me, like, yo, what foam can you use? Yo, what soap you use? What this, that? You... Bro, I'm going to give it to you. You're not, you're not harming me. Once I see that you taking business from me, all right, now it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But a lot of people, like, I, I have a good heart. You know, I'm here to help. If you, if you help me, I'll help you. Jay dedicated a lot of time here, bro. There was, yo, this E36 in the back. We stood here until six o'clock in the morning, bro. Doing no, a paint correction and ceramic. Still some sleepless nights here. Yeah, bro. bro. Me and him, bro. Jay. If I show you a picture of him, you remember him. Spanish kid. I know there's a couple. There's, there I mean, was a, there was a few Spanish niggas, but <laughs> Jay Jay stood out from from all my workers. You know what I'm saying? My team that I got now, I love my team. I always love who I got. Love my team. You know what I'm saying? They show me a lot of loyalty because I treat them good. I talk to them. I mentor them. I teach them. You know what I'm saying? Who wouldn't? A lot of these kids, they either don't got a big brother. Big brother probably ain't shit. Mm-hmm. So if you look at me as your big brother and I'm lit, you're going to fuck with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, with you being in a position that you are in today, has anyone you've worked with or a shop that you've worked at, has any one of those owners reached out to you and say congratulations? Are they happy oh, for you? Oh, of course. Supreme. Like, I was on the phone with him like two days ago. <laughs> all the mother niggas can eat a dick, but all... <laughs> Yo, real shit guy. but um <laughs> supreme like he always like we always talk like that's like my big bro too like he always tell me like yo 
Uh, we was talking like two days ago. He called me. I called him at like eleven o'clock because I always checking him on. I always check up on him, and he always check up on me. And he told me he was like, "Yo, bro, I see you doing your thing. You know, I may not call you, and I may not, I may not tell you, but I see you doing your thing, and I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? And I fuck with shit like that. It's because I always shouted out his business. I always told him like how proud of. Even till this day, the nigga's mad busy. He 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 wanted up opening three shops. Damn. I tell him all the time, like, yo, bro, I'm proud of you. Oh, yeah, his little brother got a shop, too. His brother got a yeah. shop. You know Darren. what I'm saying? Like, I'll be like, yo, bro, I'm proud of you. You know what I'm saying? Bro, that's what it's about. Why I got to hate on the nigga? I'm not even in that field of work. We all out yeah. here. Fuck, eat, I got to hate on that Max. nigga for. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't really understand why people operate the way they operate. And I say this because when I left the stand shop, right, the owner of the stand shop did not fuck with me no more. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever yeah. reason bro i left bro i left on good graces bro i even took a picture of the shop i shot at the nigga out i told him like yo bro thank you for having me here thank you for teaching me everything that you taught me bro i, I told the nigga probably like a week before i decided to leave like yo keith i'm gonna leave i'm gonna go to a different shop blah 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 bro to this day now he don't fuck with me for what reason i don't know and if you ask me i don't give a fuck bro <laughs> Damn, I really okay. don't. I really don't Damn. give a fuck, bro. Remember when I said in the beginning of the episode that uh, he got some shit to say? Yeah. Um, I didn't know what it was going to be, but bro, apparently this is. I really is don't give a fuck, bro. It's like, yeah. bro, if I knew that I did something deep down or I said something, then I'd be like, all right. You know, that's where I see why the nigga don't fuck with me. Now, I know you don't, you may not have nothing against him. You know yeah. what I mean? But there's a lot of shop beefs going around, though. Well, Recently, I, I feel like this is a conversation that y'all probably, because y'all, came up together yeah so and you probably witnessed a lot of the stuff that was happening back a then lot. a lot of shops be talking shit like and i noticed because a shop owners would come here talking shit about other shop owners that's what happens all the time and they'll say it to me too and i'm just a camera, just guy. A camera yeah, guy it's like yo like fuck wrong with y'all niggas yeah. bro i don't talk shit about no shop unless you're a shitty shop mm -hmm. you have a reason for me to talk shit i'm gonna i'm gonna talk i'm gonna talk my shit even 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 if i i probably won't even talk my shit to be honest I'll probably just be like, oh, nah, don't go there. Go here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of these shop owners, like shop owners, y'all just open up these shops and then do whatever. That's what it seemed like. Y'all niggas just don't even know, like, how to conduct business. I'm not saying I'm perfect or I even know how to conduct business. But I'm open. And I'm busy every day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I, to my knowledge, I don't have a bad name. To my knowledge. I don't hear any, anybody say anything bad about me every single day people call me yo billy told me to come here yo john told me to come here dms yo my friend matthew told me to come here bro i know how to conduct business you open up a shop you let me tell you guys something right <laughs> you cannot open up a shop and think that you're going to be rich your your main objective should not be money repeat that again mm. no it should not be money it should be customer service and whatever the fuck that you're providing. Make sure that you're good at it. Make sure that you try to be the best at it. I try every day. I'm not perfect. I try every day to conduct myself and conduct the team to provide the best service that we possibly can. Don't get me wrong. This is for my customers too. We are human. We fuck up. <laughs> we are allowed to fuck up. I wake up and I have my bad days. I'm looking directly in the camera. <laughs> I wake up and I have my bad days. My team members may have their bad days. We go through things like you go through things. You understand? So it's like if something is fucked up or you was not happy with your service as a customer, let the owner or the business, whoever owns that business, let them know. I don't care if you don't go back there. You don't have to go back there. Let them know so they can correct it. Yeah fix their mistake mm -hmm. That's Let, if if we clean your car and we didn't vacuum the car properly you don't want to come back to us okay that's fine you know we lost you as a customer let me know so i could tell my team like yo tighten up on the vacuum this customer complained about the vacuum we should not have no more customers complaining about vacuuming mind you we're not robots we're allowed to make mistakes john and billy could be vacuuming your car they had a fucked up day they had a fucked up night they they going through it you know what I'm saying? A family member could have passed. You know, a lot of these customers don't understand that. Yeah, they don't. You know what I'm saying? That I feel like me being a business owner, that shit changed my whole perspective. Dealing with customers and like 
the most stupidest customers be coming here sometimes, bro. I'm not gonna like. I'm not gonna. Even You're lie gonna to have that though, as you have more volume and traffic coming yeah. into the shop, and you're on the main road also, so I'm sure you get some walk-ins too. Some I'm sure, stupid right? ass customers sometimes, yeah. <laughs> 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 and bro, this is me being real. This is not Minty talking. This is Mar talking. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not talking as a business owner. I'm talking as me right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, some stupid ass questions. Stupid, I, yo, like one thing I don't like, don't negotiate prices with me. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. I know it's like, know. <laughs> yo, I post a certain way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to walk into a Porsche dealership trying to pay Nissan money for a Porsche. Don't make sense. You see the way I post that we post in a quality amount of work, a quality amount of cars. Don't hit me up and say, yo, can I get a discount? I don't know you. Why would I give you a discount? That's do you, get, you, you go, get DMs like that? Huh? You get DMs I like get that? I get DMs like that. I get people that come Small in. Ask me. People you never even met. Never met. Yo, can you hook me up? No. But, and do, they, how do they, they know your pricing though? Mm-hmm. I tell them. I'll be like, yo, it's X amount of money for this job. Yo, can you do it for this price? No. Well, I can't. okay. Well, how much do you charge? For what? Washes? Oh, a car wash or a I have very, very prices of washes depending on what triple washes. Walk, my wax. my cheapest wash is fifty dollars. That's in and out. That's your cheapest wash. Fifty. So what's I don't even know. Okay, so what's your most expensive wash? My most expensive wash is one fifty. And what does that include? What's the difference? It's called between? a luxury wash. Okay. So like pretty much all the washes combined into one. So that's us. Full hand wash, clay bar, iron. Oh, clay bar. Uh, yeah. Clay bar, iron, and leather conditioner on the seats. Full vacuum, wipe down everything. Yeah. That's the luxury wash. That's is 150, right? Some people hear 150, they're like, oh, why? That's so much. Okay. You don't have to do it. Yeah. you. I mean, honestly, I paid a 50. Well, yeah. I was paying, I don't even know what, I, 20 bucks before. Yeah. Like when I first started coming here. Yeah. And then your price went up. Yeah. I ain't mad. Shit. I see how you work. I ain't complaining. Shit, yeah. I was 20 is kind of cheap. Obviously. People, believe it or not, people complain. Some lady came here, right? This is, we rose, we raised our, our wash used to be $40. I raised the price to 50 in January, right? Some lady came here like, why'd you raise the prices? <laughs> I told her. <laughs> I said, when you go to the supermarket and you buy a carton of eggs and they raise the prices, do you ask the person why they raise the prices? She calls the no. company. There's a number on the back. You can call. You know that, right? She don't call them. I bet you she don't. <laughs> she still wait, buy it. She still buy it. Yeah. You understand? So it's like, don't question me on why. Yo, everything is going up. We're in a fucking recession. My materials went up. Cost of living. Exactly. So it's like. You said it just like that? Just like that. That's, how you, that's exactly No, said I said. It. No, I told her. I said, when you go to the supermarket <laughs> and you yeah. buy milk and it goes up in price, do you ask the owner why the price went up? She says no. So I said, okay, so why are you asking me? I, I take offense to that. It's because. Yo, my team is working hard. You come here, we doing the most on your car for fifty fucking dollars, bro. If you didn't want to come here, don't come. You don't have to come. If you want your car treated a certain way, then that's when you come and you pay the price. You understand? So it's like, yo, if you don't want to come, you don't have to come. And I'm not saying this by being cocky or like, oh, I have X amount of volume. It's that no, I have standards. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I. Like, I respect myself, I respect my business, and I also mainly, I respect my workers. I know what they have to do because I work with them Yeah. for only $50. You know what I'm saying? If tables yeah. was turned, people, sometimes people ask me, like, yo, why don't you boost up the price? Like, I feel like I'm not paying enough. I tell those people, yo, leave a tip. Leave a tip to the point where you feel like you're paying enough. But I want to accommodate for this area of Freeport. Yeah, yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And the area of... of, of my customers. I'm not trying to head knock no people. Once again, you don't go into business and 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 thinking that you're going to be a millionaire. You got to go into business satisfying these people. Once you're able to satisfy these people and you leave a good taste on their tongue, pause, you bring them back. They come back all the time. Experience. That's all what people want is the experience. That's why the shop is modified away. The waiting room is modified away. I try to train my receptionist to talk to these people some type of way. Is because I always want people to feel welcome here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make them feel like they're at home, literally, but they're getting a service. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that's key to business. So, God. No, what I was going to say was, um, now you have a lot of different type of cars that come through. Yeah. Loud cars, low cars. Yeah. Sometimes cars leave doing burnouts, yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> now, do you have any trouble with neighbors? Do they... Nah, I actually don't. They're cool? Freeport is pretty cool. Like, I try to, like... 
one thing about me like i said i'm a business person so i think about all of that you know mm-hmm. It's not every day where people is leaving here and they doing burnouts. You know, every now and then, mm-hmm. rarely, you know, it happens. But even when the cops come by, I try to I introduce myself to them. If cops ever come over here for whatever reason, I introduce myself to them. You know, I want to be good with the village. You got to be good with the village. These niggas is the one that's, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. be an asshole, they going to be here all the time, ticketing yeah. you for whatever reason. I park my car right in the front by a bus stop. Sometimes I get taken by the parking police, you know, sometimes, but... Nobody, no cops don't bother me. No cops ever come here and bother me saying, oh, your music too loud or the cars there or the parking. You know what I'm saying? I try to always be very respectful with these cops around here. That's good. Yeah, all the time. And they repaved the street too, so. Of course. This one? Yeah, Yeah, just just now. I was hitting some bumps on on that turn over there still. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, they repaved the whole shit. Shit fresh. Anybody that want to come and do some donuts. (laughs) Yeah, this guy over here. Y'all know he be. He retired. He retired, retired, right? He retired. He retired. We got to bring back the old school Ray. Yeah. So, all right. How do you. So, if if you're only making $50 on washes, how are you paying your employees and paying overhead at the same time? See, that's that's the tough part is that. um, Well, people think that's the tough part. It's like, yo, we only do washes. We do so much things here we rebuild wheels we powder coat we tent we wrap cars so it's like once you're able to factor in a whole bunch of options once you're able to make your your shop the one-stop shop yeah you know what i'm saying you're gonna make the money right you know what i'm saying you're gonna make the money i feel like me personally i can make way more money than i'm making it's that i'm i always think about the person's pocket instead of thinking about the business you know what I'm saying? I always think like, damn, maybe he can't afford the sausage charge of this much. So I feel like that's also fair for me. But that's why I'm trying to transition to into like, yo, you know, you know what you're doing. If you know that you're doing this, like charge this amount. You know what I'm saying? They wouldn't have hit you up if they didn't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, bro, we post Lambos, Ferraris, Porsches. I done watched so many and dealt with so many type of cars and I post them. It's like, yo. If you see us posting this work, you know that we're trying or we're giving out quality work. You know, that's why you hit us up. A lot of people, they intros, yo, I seen that you guys, my boy hit me up. He said, you guys do good work. A lot of times people always hit me up like that. All right, you want good work? You got to pay for good work. They expect yeah. a discount you gotta pay once they mention the name. Yeah, you got to pay for good work. You want good work? You got to pay for good work. That's you know? Fact. Yeah. How are you, how, how are you doing this? <laughs> Like, like I don't I, understand. How am I paying everything? Yeah, because all right. Let's say if I wanted to open up a shop. Yeah. Me personally, right now, let's say I found the shop for let's say twenty. Let's, let's just say three thousand dollars a month. Uh huh. How much money would I have to make on a monthly basis in order for me to be able to open up a shop and have employees as well? Well, that's let's when say the num- if we're doing detailing. That's when the numbers crunching. You gotta, you gotta sit down, know what it. Everything is numbers and math, right? So it's like you gotta. You got to track what it is that you do a month for you to know what you got to do for the future. So if let's say the first month you open, you made you did 20 cars and you know that you did 20 cars and you made, let's say, 10,000 out of that okay. 10,000, 3,000 is for your rent. You're left with 7,000, whatever, whatever the math is. Right. 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 You know that going into next month, go harder. You have to make, make more, more money. Mm-hmm. Find a service that you can offer even if it don't tend to the business, find a service that you can offer to make you, even if it's $500 more, Yeah, that $500 more could be another worker, another employee, another, you know what I'm saying? It could, bro, you just got to think of it like that. Like, yo, all right, I got X. That's how I think of it. I know that I have X amount of people. I got to make the minimum. Whatever to cover their costs, to pay them. Just their costs. The minimum, right. this is what I know. When I wake up and it's Mondays, I'm like, all right, Today's Monday. I got six days to make X amount of money to then pay my employees. I don't think about rent. I don't think about me. First factor is my employees. I got to think about them first because if I can't pay them, they have no hope. There's no hope in the business. If let's say you're going somewhere and you're working somewhere and your manager tell you like, yo, I can't even pay you this week. We need even make it. You're going to think in your head, like, why the fuck am I even working here? Right, right. <laughs> this nigga probably don't even got no money. Like, yo, there's no future for here for me. There's a lot of times, like, there was a couple of times where we didn't even make X amount of money. I had to come out of my pockets and pay people. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? That's what it is as a business owner. You're going to have weeks like that. You're going to have months like that Sometimes where you don't do make that. enough money to, you know what I'm saying, take care of people. But then 
if you structure in the business right there's gonna be there's gonna be months where you make you make triple the bread there's quadruple the bread you save that tuck that because there's gonna be rainy days there's gonna be rainy days where you didn't make enough money this week to pay everybody but you got yeah. it though you got mm-hmm. it it's in a tuck you know what i'm saying so that's that's pretty much how i do it you know what i'm saying okay. I, I wake up mondays and i know like I, I gotta make this amount of money so that's when i go into i hit up ray yo ray i need two videos this week i gotta do some promotion right i hit up i hit up a customer or i, I do a sale or something i do something to know that i can make the money you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's how i do it so now there's people that start their detailing careers doing mobile detailing yeah. as opposed to opening up a shop yeah um I'm not sure if you have a mobile detailing truck. I do, yeah. So you didn't seem too crazy about the mobile detailing situation. Yeah. Um, can you explain why you feel like that's not as good as having your own shop? When you have your own shop, you're able to do more things that make you more money. Meaning like the highest service of detailing is paint correction and ceramic coating. You can't do that when you have a mobile. I mean, you can, but you can't. Because you can't do that outside. You got to do that indoors. Right. That's the highest level of detailing, paint correction and ceramic coating the car. So it's like like another reason why I don't f- I don't really mess with the detailing and this is not no bash to anybody that does mobile. It's like, yo, mobile, anyone can start a mobile. Anyone can do mobile. Not everybody can open up a shop. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, fuck what I do mobile for. Yeah. I got to drive to your house and wash your car. Fuck that. Come to my shop, let me wash your car. You know what I'm saying? Like don't get me wrong you got to start somewhere yeah you know you got to start somewhere but what a lot of people because even a couple mobile dudes hit me up and they and they got shops now what you guys don't understand is that when you mobile you you accommodating for that customer like it's it's convenient for them to come to you you think because you open a shop they still gonna come to you no you were doing them a favor by going to their house Right. right whether the service was good or not they're gonna find another mobile person because there's a million mobile niggas now mm-hmm. just like yeah. there's almost a million shops but there's a million plus more mobile niggas you know what yeah, i'm saying right. so it's like why would i want to call you and go to your shop yeah i know your work was good but now you're a 30 minute drive from me why would i want to do that mm-hmm. i don't want to do that i want to i want convenience so that's why that's not what i factored in when in terms of mobile i just more so i don't like following the bandwagon at that time when i started up i felt like everybody was doing mobile a lot of people are doing it now. A lot of people are doing it. But now. you do it like on and off now. Sometimes I right? don't even do it. If you ask me, I really yeah. today I woke up thinking about selling my mobile <laughs> van. But really, when I seen it, it's like now I really use my mobile van as like, yo, if we gotta pick up something and we don't have the space, yeah, we use it. Is that what you were right. gonna help me out with? That, that? yeah, I would have okay. used that shit. But it's commercial, so I would have had to take local roads. You and can't, I would have took. You can't day. take parkways. Nah, I can't right. take parkways. So that's why I didn't even consider it. But it's like the mobile van, like. Somebody called me today, like, yo, you doing mobile? I told him, no. Like, now, I o- only offer mobile on Sundays because the shop is closed on Sundays. Once again, I always factor in my team. If my mm. team, if my team, you go, yo, you guys want to make more money? Do mobile on Sundays. We're, we're closed on Sundays. Everybody's off on Sundays. Yeah. Y'all want to make more money? Do mobile on Sundays. Here's the keys. Here's the van. Y'all want to get your customers? Y'all want me to get the customers? Get it. I don't even want no money. Whatever y'all make, split it between whoever's working with you guys. That's fine. I'm trying to work Sundays, bro. Bro, I don't. Bro, that's the thing. I don't. I don't. Care. Are you trolling? No, I'm serious. I don't. Asking, <laughs> I've been asking for application for like three months. Oh, you bro. trying to work? Mm-hmm. Ray's bullshitting. <laughs> There's no way. I'm He's so bullshit. serious. You got too many edits, bro. Where are my yeah. photos at? That's true. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, with my, with my, with my. Uh... Yo, don't even ask about that. Yo, that's a pet peeve. If you want to get this guy pissed, or actually any photographer, videographer pissed off, yeah. ask him, yo, where's my where's my photos at from like that one time? Nah, Ray, that's seriously, true. seriously, <laughs> where's, where's the video that we did with yeah. the M4 last week? That's in an old um, hard drive. Yeah. Video, we did that last week. Oh, oh he don't even remember. That go. He didn't no, edit it I know exactly which go. video yeah, yeah. Can I get that? All right, I got you. I got you tonight. We're going to drop that. You heard, you heard, you heard, if y'all saw how he said, yeah, I got you tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah, getting it. I already know I'm not getting it. Right, that's why when he, when he comes here when back he comes here let, let me tell you something when Ray's come here and he, and he shoot for me 
we edit on the couch and he give it to me right there that's the best yeah way i started bringing my laptop yeah, yeah. because i know like if he leave yeah which i do in videos but like I videos you, i'll yeah, tell videos. you one thing though me and him had a schedule this week that we we're gonna follow yeah yeah yeah, yeah but yeah. he didn't come through on his end i came oh, through on my end okay. i put it in my calendar today and everything. Yeah. yeah nah today was i know i wanted you on a podcast so he set me up. Oh, so he set yeah, you up. Set you I up. didn't even know yeah, you wasn't doing a podcast, yeah. but it's a good thing you either. are. I thought I was just getting a wash. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a good thing that you are because this is uh you know you you were there from the come up. So. It's cool to come by Minchie. So nah, of course, bro. Always no, try no, to no. give a vibe for everybody, customer or not. So it's a vibe here. What's the what's the future looking like for Minty? Yeah, that was my next question. <sighs> That's a good question. You know, I, wait before you answer that. How did you come up with the name Minty? I yeah. tell you, I tell you right now. You know who gave me that the name Minty? First question. Actually, right. You know who gave me the name Minty? Jay. When I'm at, at Keith, which oh, E46 J. Yeah. When I used to wash his car, mind you, my name was I Detail. Shout the reason why Jay. I changed it because somebody was named I Detail already in Miami or Florida. Mm. So when he came to me, he was like, "Yo, every time you wash my car, it's so mint, man. It's so mint." <laughs> so he started calling me Minty. He's like, "Yo, Minty, wash my car for me." So I was like, "Minty Detail." Minty detailing. Boom, there it is. Did you get the logo from Rotoform? Nah, my boy Jason made the logo for me. It looks like a Rotoform inspired logo. <laughs> yeah, I like it plain and simple. But every I like like you see the T? The T's only drop one time per summer. It's like a like I like the idea of like a supreme T. So yeah. I got the OG. You got, got the OG, OG yeah. It I don't have drop, no T shirts. It only <laughs> So we ain't gonna talk about that. You know what I'm saying? It I ain't only got no drop tea. one time like, per year. Like if I change the design, like this is a new design for the summer, but this is mm. only for the summer. Next summer. When did you drop that? The beginning of the summer. Oh, nice. And we're in July. I still don't have one. <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm 2021, yeah, 2022, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, And I was yeah. here last year too, I believe. So well, I didn't get <laughs> I that. I got you in the tea. Last year's tea. I got some teas well. in there. What size you in? I'm just waiting for <laughs> my. You know what I'm saying? Just waiting. Just saying. Because I ain't getting no t shirts. Yo, me? I don't hand them out. You it's just more so like, like yo, too. You... So you coming from far. You setting up equipment. Oh, I ain't got no time to see how he runs me down for videos. You have to run him down for the time. Yeah, for the tea. The tea's exclusive. Yeah, I only I only wear oversized boxy t shirts. So if I wear something like that, it's gotta be like an XL. You see, I don't even make XLs. The biggest size I make is a medium. Oh, because you know what's funny? So you don't got no exclusive. big dudes working there. You got whole skinny niggas working here. Exactly. And that's you don't wear your black Air Forces today. Nah, not today. <laughs> <laughs> not today. But um yeah, only skinny niggas work here. So that's why I only got medium as my biggest size. That's sizes. crazy. So, so it should not... be easy for me to get a job once I give you the application. I don't think you He's not medium, skinny though. though. I'm skinny. I think you're you a not like, I'm, nah, you're pretty cut a little bit. And and his his employees all look like him. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's <laughs> yeah, a good yeah, point. Yeah, they all yeah. look like him. Yeah, for real. Small for the receptionist, medium for all of us. That's it. Now, okay. You actually, you didn't. You still didn't answer my question. So before I ask the next, well, question. he's ducking a lot today. But we are gonna leave. We gonna leave. Yeah, nah, yeah, I answer yeah. everything. What's up? Uh huh. Um. So what's the future looking like for Minty? <laughs> Yo, believe it <laughs> or get not, back to the question. I, I tell ask. you, I tell you my honest opinion. Believe it or not, I really don't feel like I want to keep doing detailing. Get out of here, bro. You wanted yeah, to just like, be kinda up and like running? Once, nah, not even like just. So why it. are we doing this interview then? Let's cut the cameras. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and the only reason why I say that is because everybody wants to be a detailer, bro. Everybody. Yeah, wants but to not be everybody's detailer. minty. Nah, that's true. That's true. But it's like, that's like you being a photographer. I am. And sort everybody of. wants to do what you're doing. Literally. Everybody's doing it. Yeah. It's you fake don't want to do it no more. Right. You fake lose interest for it. Am I wrong or am I right? You got you, a point. You're, you're, you're halfway right. Yeah. I, I feel like. There's a lot it's of not like, It's not saying like I want to get rid of it. And that's my plan. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I would. But sometimes I feel like that. It's like, yo, why am I doing this? Like there's 30,000 niggas washing cars now. 30,000 niggas with a shop now. Why am I doing this? Everybody got the lights. Everybody's doing black. Everybody's doing this. Fuck am I doing this for? It doesn't matter how much you change. Somebody's going to follow you. How do you How do you be different if somebody always follow you? You got to have the right team around you, bro. There's so much that you could do to the point where, yo, when am I going to be have when, like when am I going to be able to chill? Well, that's what I was saying. How, like, OK, so you, you're, you have your employees, you have your team, yeah. you have your businesses running out of the shop. How do you scale this to be able to maybe open up another shop and then make money so, out of that shop? So it's funny because I actually I actually sat down at dinner with some one of my customers that wants to uh, be an investor and open up another a second shop with me. Um, I feel like I want to open up a second shop, but I just feel like, so I really and truly want to retire at 35. I'm 27. I don't want to work. I don't want to answer Same. no calls at 35 years old. You trying to be like uh four or five. Yeah. 
He's he's retired, retired. Yeah, he's retired. He's retired. bored. Yeah, really bored. He's he's, he's bored. He's driving the EK four door, fully built, just traveling. on live. Yeah. Traveling. His Rolls Royce is outside. That's his Rolls Royce right oh, that's there. That's his car. Yeah, yeah. He's just chilling. Clean. He's just chilling, bro. Buying he just, cribs. He's, like, yeah, he bought a new crib. That's where I want to be at the age of thirty five. Time time versus time versus time dollar. versus dollar. I don't feel like opening up a second shop would. I, I care about the business too much. I care about my name too much. It's hard for me to like let that go. Mm-hmm. As much like I can open up a second shop. I can open up a third shop. I can hire people. I could hire a manager. That doesn't mean that they're going to have the same care as I do. It's my yeah. name. I started this. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's hard for me to then trust someone, find someone at that to do certain shit bro it's like yo nowadays nobody fucking wants to work we outside it's 90 degrees outside we still gotta work we sweating like a motherfucker no bro. ac in here either no ac it's so, like i get here at 10 Damn, o'clock no ac is crazy yeah, yeah bro. bro i get here 9 30 i mean probably the second shot when <laughs> i get bread i'll probably get it closed ac so everybody's able to work comfortably how much is ac again i don't even know you ever look to see no. how much it is i it's would not mad i would not look because shot. then i would have to close the gates mm. Oh, that's I true. don't want to do that. I'm going to look closed. Yeah, that's a fact. But um, the second shop is like, you know, I feel like it's in the future. I, I always wanted to open up a shop in Miami. Mm, that's a fire spot. Yeah, I always, on, I always wanted a shop in Miami. And the only reason why I said that is because I went out there for like a semi like like a little vacation just to clear my mind. And like, I think that was my first time in Miami. It's just like when I touched down, it was like, yo, damn. I smelled the air. It was like... <laughs> Yo, I'm Money. telling you, the air smells different in mm-hmm. a lot of places outside of New York. Yeah, like the shit is polluted. anywhere outside of New York. It smells, it smells different. Yeah, it it's a lot of, it's too. like a lot of fonto and backwood in it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't smoke, but a lot yeah, of, yeah, I mean, you know what's crazy? I did a music video for um, a friend of mine. He flew me out to Miami. I shot a music video within 12, 12 hours and caught a plane right back. Within those twelve hours, I enjoyed Miami. Uh, yeah, honestly, you'd be surprised yeah, how yeah, much you yeah. can do and it's end. like yo bro i went to go look at a spot because I, w- I was so determined i was like yo i'm gonna get a spot out here while i was out there i went to go look at a spot it was probably like th- three four times as bigger for the same price that i'm paying right here mm-hmm. yeah the so price is like, different too it was like why the fuck am i here you know what i'm saying so customers out there are real different too yeah 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 if, no yeah if you could survive in new york you could survive anywhere, anywhere literally literally so i thought about miami but uh, I feel like I'm going to retire eventually and live in Miami. So that's why I thought about Miami. But I feel like for the near future, I do want to op- I do want to open up another shop, another shop or two. You, you know, just got to let go, bro. Because I yeah, feel like- that's the hardest part. Fearless. Can you let go of Tooks Production and let somebody else run it and edit and do all, all, all the shit? That's, but that's different, though. Why you say that? It's a little different because it, it involves a lot of creativity. Yeah. And I can oversee certain things, but... But you I have see, to train somebody. You to see do what a you said? Thing. Creativity. A lot of my rails, a lot of things that I do, I do it on my own. Yeah. When Ray comes and shoots, sometimes I, I'm the director. I just tell Ray like, "Yo, shoot this, shoot that," right. and edit it that way. Literally. You once know what I'm I, saying? Once I come here, I'm I just feel like, like that's another thing. Director. In, yeah, but it's better. If, I'd rather have that than than me having yeah. to come up with stuff. But he always don't. have good ideas. It's not just basic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like that's that's also like a key when it comes to business. Like you got to be creative as fuck. Mm-hmm. Stand out. Be a little different. You know that shit don't hurt at all. Like be a little different. Like, psh, like yo, my thoughts. Sometimes it's just like, as I'm going and I hear a song or I see what somebody's doing, that's where I get the vision. That's where yeah. I be like, oh, that's fire. Like, I, oh, let's shoot it like that. Let's shoot it like this. Or like, yo, I seen a commercial. I'm like, yo, let me remix the com- remix this commercial to like something different. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I really get my creativity from. I feel like yo, if you go on my grammar, you scroll through, you listen to the songs that I pick. You watch the flow of the videos. Some people appreciate it, but in the re- in 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 the era that we live in, like the attention span of pe- attention span of people is, yeah. is like two seconds. Now, how do you pick these songs for your reels? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. That's the worst thing. I'm that curious most to know how videographers well, got to deal with. Right now, I don't even pick songs. I only do instrumentals. Mm-hmm. I don't I heard pick just trending songs. Word. I don't. Uh-huh. I you what I used to do. I <laughs> used to pick that other than him. Yeah, right? I, I used to pick like a song <laughs> that I'm listening to at the moment, and then I'll drop it with the video. Okay, okay. From what I heard, my video man don't appreciate that, so that's when I switched up. Oh, okay. Yeah. There were times where I shot videos for him. Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, but you see, you see, you see what he did. He would put I'm like a in the middle ghetto ass song. So I don't want that on my page. I'm Why trying not? to. I'm trying to structure the business as. 
not niggerish. I feel you. You know what I'm saying? So a calm little. But see, that. here's the problem. He doesn't <laughs> tell me. He just drops the video to to a complete different song that With cuts different, her the off. Cuts it off because he let me, let me tell right. you something. So why he fa- why he got to put the nigga song for me? So give me a song. <laughs> <laughs> we already had this discussion. We had this discussion. Yeah, now, matter of fact, are my sneakers here? The giveaway sneakers? sneakers that one. Uh, we already uh, raffled that. That's gone. Uh, I won though. Nah, you didn't win. I'm you didn't pretty even sure enter. I won. Nah, you didn't enter. Yes. How you know how to enter? Because I girl have answer every- too. No, nah, I have all the enter names. I, the sneakers are oh. still here, though. Yeah, the, the owner got to come pick it up. I did the raffle yesterday. What's the next raffle? <sighs> I don't know. I was trying to build up the raffle so that eventually I raffle cards, but. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> you learned your lesson. I, I saw four or five said it. He said, "Yo, not everybody could do giveaways." Nah, yeah, I, yeah. I ain't, I ain't I talking about you, I but commend it. I commend forty five because that shit is. I just raffling sneakers and whatever services I got here, and that shit was. How just, long it take you to raffle those? My first raffle did really good. It took me like a week, maybe a That's week and bad. a half. This raffle, since I wasn't really promoting it as much, I, like once I dropped the raffle, I dropped other videos like services, yeah. and I just got mad busy to the point where I wasn't even promoting the raffle that much. I actually had to like tell my sister and my cousin, that, yo, give me 20, enter this raffle to like fill up the, like, the last five, six spots because nobody wasn't entering because I wasn't really promoting it that much. You know what I'm saying? You got to promote. Yeah, what if I be promoting? Yeah. That's his whole page. It's promote, promote. Nah, man. yeah, I know. But I don't think I have the patience to do. I'm about to win the S two thousand. By the way, just mark my words. So, uh, I can't even say that because you know what? If I, I actually, if I do win that, he probably. I don't, I don't, how's that gonna work? He got my number. Like, yeah, he like, got Yo, your tubes. number. He'll call like, you. Yeah, he'll call you if you win. People are gonna be like, I entered, oh, it's a scam. I entered a, f- a few forty five raffles. I, I've been entering the last two. But the shit that I know, that like Big Brad, like the G eighties, all of the big. You cars. don't want S two thousand? Wow, I had two. I, I must be the only one that haven't entered a raffle. Never? Never. Bro, it'd be like four dollars. Like what the fuck? I don't know. Yeah. I just never so entered cheap. a raffle. It was like two ninety nine. Yeah. So it's like, yo, buy like <laughs> two ninety nine. Ten dollars yeah, worth of raffle. Two dollars to enter? Like Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought to enter a raffle. By the way, we're talking about forty five NYC. He raffled cars weekly. Every week, every Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. So you guys could tap in and try to win a car. If, yeah. Uh, I yeah. mean, he's giving them away and it's legit. Literally. Yeah. Literally. He's, he's definitely giving them away. Yeah. So, all right. So you plan on opening up a shop, possibly. You want to retire at 35. Yeah. Right? Um, you also have wheels that you do here as well. Because right yeah. now we're in the process of trying to find me some wheels. Yeah, um, we're trying to get tooks right. So we got to get them off them shits. Can you talk about that process when it comes to... <laughs> <laughs> yo, I, uh, yo. We got to get them off. Well, I just caught on to what he what said. Looking for. Let the world know what wheels I can't, looking I can't for. Let, I can't let the world know because I don't want people knowing. Ah. It's not a big deal, but yeah. it's just like... Biters. Nah, it's not biters. It's, there's cars with these wheels. Um, but I just, I don't let, know. Let them niggas know. I mean, not let I'm them know. Let to pop them find out. out. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But um, these wheels are, there's a long wait time for them. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned to me that, you know. I could you get could, them done a little you quicker. get them done a little. So you still offer that service where you can kind of. Yeah. So pretty much I have a plug in Cali that works uh, in a warehouse with lips and barrels and stuff like that. Um, I could get lips, any size lips, any size barrels. Um, I can, I can build wheels from scratch. I don't promote it that much, is because people, people don't understand. Like I have no control in what the people from Cali is doing. Mm. You know Price wise, or just like no, in terms of wait time. Wait time. So if they okay. tell me like, "Yo, it's two weeks for the lips," I'm telling you, it's two weeks for the lips. Two weeks come and they be like, yo, we need more time. X happened or DZ happened. I have to tell the customer the same thing. They're so impatient. They want their wheels right now. They want to pop out right now. That's why I don't really offer it like that. You know, if you got to, I repolish wheels. I re, uh, do faces. I rebuild wheels. I seal wheels. A lot of times I tell people like, yo, bring your parts and I'll do what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? If it's my people's, I could source the parts. But I just let them know like, yo, it's a wait time. Some customers, I even tell them, like, yo, I could source the parts, just know it's a wait time. You know, sometimes I could get it, boom, like that, if we got it in the stock. My guy from Cali, he's like legit, some Chinese guy. Um, but if I can't get it, what the fuck? Like, what y'all want me to do? Y'all want me to pull it out my ass? Yeah. I mean, that's true. The wait times is crazy, but I mean, two weeks is better than waiting eight months to a year. Nah, yeah. But you <laughs> so see, the people, you the people that's the people that's like telling that's you eight months for out. eight months to a year is the same. Is they dealing with the same people I'm dealing with? So it's like 
People will be wanting these custom shits. Yo, I want 65 inch lips and 35 inch barrels. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. We don't have that in stock. It has to be made from scratch. It has to be, it has to be made. Like you got to give it time. If yeah. you telling me you want this, you don't think other niggas done told me that you got to wait, bro. You right. know, a lot of people don't understand that. Especially when the season get hot. And the I tell them, I tell people up, that bro. all the time, like, yo, bro, I can possibly get it for you. It's just a wait time. You know, if you could wait and you have patience, I could get it for you. No problem. I'm probably just going to end up like just saying fuck it because at this point, like we're in, about to be in August and I'm not going to get nothing in time for me to go to Gatlinburg with. Nah, yeah, bro. I'm just just next season. It. If next anything, season. I feel like it's always best to like prepare your car over the winter. You know, I agree. Prepare your car over the winter. Ain't nothing That's really going on in the know. winter. Yeah. Build your wheels, get your tires, get your get your whole shit together for the winter. Then spring come, you pop out in the spring. Summertime, you ready. Now, I, I'm curious to know what's the craziest experience you ever had to deal with um with a customer they got crazy on you believe it or not nah bro because i'm really calm i feel like That's i come good. off calm and i'm very respectful so like if people if people come out their face i step away i let my receptionist deal with it you know what i'm saying damn, I don't, you be letting the, damn i'm sorry bro that's how it is because <laughs> I, I know my temper sometimes like we had a customer come here the other like a, a couple weeks ago argue me about the prices and this and that i'm like yo you talk to him because if i talk to him it's just i'm just gonna get out of character and i'm not trying to like bro i'm really big on like scaling the business to a certain way everything professional you know what i'm saying like if i know that i'm gonna get out of character with somebody i step away yo you talk to him i don't i don't care as long as he don't hit you i don't care what he says to you you know that's your job as a receptionist right. you got to take the bullshit me i don't got to because i'm the owner i walk away from that shit you know what i'm saying so as far as something crazy really nothing to be honest nobody never really came in here talking hot slapped me or you know cursed me out nothing like that like i don't this is my home yeah this is my home you know what i'm saying literally so it's like for you to let somebody in your home and disrespect you is like crazy you know what i'm saying yeah. like i i don't allow it i it never happened to me and i don't feel like i ever gave off the aura where somebody i let like somebody feel like comfortable doing it to me you know what i'm saying right. never ever never, never ever so in terms of that like i never had a big problem with customers it's just sometimes you know they come in here they haggle me with the prices that's it nothing does it, does it bother you when customers show up late of course because i go only appointments oh man i'm the king uh, of that only yeah I'm, I'm always on time so <laughs> we ain't got to worry about that no you i always, come after hours. wait oh yeah you always on time me yeah <laughs> yeah bro you always on time always <laughs> Were this you nigga, on time today? I'll be here 30 minutes early. This nigga had an appointment two or three days ago and was like an hour and a half late. <laughs> Not, no, I wasn't. Yeah, you was. No, I wasn't. I'm telling you, you was. You sure? You lying to the camera? <laughs> he was late, but I understand. Like, he's coming from deep. Yo, I understand if customers <laughs> are late. It, don't, it really don't bother me too much, you know? I just don't like when people... No shows. No shows get me tight. Like, two days ago, a customer came in. Her appointment was at 11. She came at like 12.30. She's like, oh, I woke up late. I said, oh, man, she don't have to reschedule. Because you're just too late. Like, wash my shit down. She nah, probably she think it's tents. a regular car wash. Oh, nah, she, she wanted tents. She wanted tents. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, when, I, when, when you make a tent appointment, right? Once again, I always try to scale the business as professional as I can. Yeah. I send you a confirmation. At the ending of the confirmation, it says, if you're not able or running late, please contact me and let me know. The fact that people do not apply that, it get me tight. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, I told you, like, yo, you can't come. It's okay. I'm not going to be mad. You running late? It's okay. I understand. Let me know. Let me know. Because now, if you're my 11 o'clock car and you're my first car and you're late, you throw off my whole entire schedule for the day. My 1 o'clock car is now pushed back. He has to wait longer now. My two o'clock car. He has to wait longer. It's like a doctor's office. Bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Barbers. Domino's Barbers effect. Barbers probably deal with that too. That's how it works with the appointment. So it's like, even with my washes, you, yo, y'all running late? Let me know. Let me know so I know like how to then make the next move. Like maybe I could like let my, let like for example, if the 11 o'clock car was late, I would have told the 1230 car to come a little earlier, start the 1230 car and just switch spots. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Instead, you just show up with no respect, and you just late. All right, so you you gotta leave now. I don't I don't know where you came from. I don't care where you came from. You gotta go, and you gotta make another appointment. If you make two appointments and you don't show, you can't make an appointment here no more. 
Oh, that's the policy. That's how I roll. Oh, I don't wow. see it inside. You got to sign up for that? Nah, it's just I'm going to tell oh, you them You should that. probably put that up. Yeah, I think I'm going to put that up. So now, really but I don't really have appointments. I don't really have like, I don't really have like flops like that. I'm not going to lie. I really don't. Like people, the people that come in, they make their appointment. They usually come. If they late, it's not crazy late. You know what I'm saying? But they usually come. If they super late or can't make it, they, they you know, they make their appointment again. I make them make their appointment again and they pull up. Now, you recently started another business venture. Yes. Got to speak more on that. Yes. A lot of people don't know. Yeah, yeah we could touch upon that Wait, a little they, bit. They don't know? Is this, is this the, uh, the car? Yeah. He posted it. I'm going to let him. I'm oh, gonna okay. let him speak yeah. On so, it. Uh, recently I got a Maybach and I'm doing like private chauffeur, you know, picking you up wherever you want to go, dropping you off, you know. Little luxury style type of vibes. Now we're supposed to do a commercial on this Friday. Friday. Schedule. Schedule. In the calendar. Okay. Yes. So let's see. Schedule. We're <laughs> gonna be on time. Updated. We're gonna go to the city. Oh, you you're always late. No, I'm always on time. Hmm. I'm we'll always see. on time. We'll see Friday. I'm always on time. Ray's always late though. I am. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. So yeah, I I recently started another business. I got a Maybach recently. Doing like private chauffeurs and stuff like that. Um that's doing pretty good. It's pretty cool. I feel like I feel like everybody deserves to be treated like kings and queens. You know what I'm saying? Royalty. That's a way of being treated like royalty. You know, a service that can show you like, yo, if you trying to live a lifestyle, this is like a, a, a like a little experience for you. This can be every day for you. You know what I'm saying? Like I really at the age of 27 years old, I have a Maybach. I don't even know nobody. I know one person as I got a Maybach. Now nah, I'm at point people. Prior to that, I only knew one person from Queens that got a Maybach. And I'm the youngest. If I'm not mistaken, I'm the youngest person in Queens with a Maybach. Right? And some people may say like, yo, oh, you be doing it, flexing. Nah, I'm doing it really to show niggas like, yo, if I could do it, you could do it. I really want to see all my peoples win. You think it's, it's cool to win on your own? That's free promo. Yeah, you think it's not cool to win on your own. It's not cool to shine on your own. I love to see it. Yo, Tooks, Tooks called me last night and spoke to me about whatever he spoke to me about, right? As my mans, I just met Tooks last year. I told him, like, yo, bro, I always told Tooks this. Yo, if there's anything that I could do to help you, I'm going to help you. Facts. And Ray, you know that too. Yeah, if you ever definitely. need me for something, bro, I'm here for you. You know what I'm saying? Got to be here for your peoples. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So Any any other cause you interested in, um, in adding to the, to to the, the fleet? fleet? Um, I really want the new Maybach. Ooh. What year was the Maybach you have? Seventeen. Seventeen. I really wanted a nineteen, but I couldn't afford it. What, what's the What's the sticker on that? It's used, obviously, right? So yeah, I paid like it? seventy, seventy seven or seventy eight, something like that. And it's basically, um, does it like mimic another car, or it's just like a like it's like an upgrade of a S five fifty or something, or it's just its own class? Nah, I think it's, it's the Maybach. highest, right? It's the yeah, highest it's of Maybach, its line. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I, I don't think really know S, too much about S five sixties is the highest, which is the V twelve. In terms yeah. of in te- like V twelve, V eight, and the same shit. This just know? has TVs in it. TV. I have TVs. I have recline chairs, massage chairs, uh, the fucking tables inside. I got all that. I just yeah, don't got know. a fridge. And what do you charge to, uh, for this? For this, uh, it depends service? on the. It depends. Let's say know. if I wanted to go to the airport, you take me and my girl to the airport. What does it cost for you? Well, all right, not me. Like retail, retail. Oh, for anybody's like two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. Is that? Like just there, one way. Pick it, yeah. Picking you up from your crib and taking you to the airport. That's, that's full service. Like that's yeah, yeah. the driver opening the door, taking your suitcases. You got TV, massage seats. What? Like there's so much stuff in the car. I got gums, fucking sports. Wait, and, now do you do stops in between? Like if the person want to stop, if and they want pick- to, bro. I'm not, bro. Once again, bro. It's not about the money. It's never about money for me, bro. It's all about service. I mean, gas kind of expensive now. Fuck <laughs> gas. <laughs> He's scratching Fuck his head. gas, bro. Like, I mean, Fuck gas. the gas, bro. So you can roll up in there too. Nah, just no smoking. No crack. Oh, nah, no Whoa. crack. <laughs> no Yo. crack. You could smoke, crack but if you want to pay, I just don't want that mm-hmm. image of you know niggerish. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why I don't want my shit to. I don't smoke. I don't smoke. I smoke occasionally, once in a blue moon. Nobody knows that. Well, just let me know what song to use for this video. <laughs> I got you. I already got you. Wait, what's so? What's what's the commercial you guys are planning? What's the? Uh, I gotta show you. So it's just pretty much like. Uh, me and my oh my driver and someone else like in the city it's like really cut scenes the car rolling in the city the the ser- like pretty much the service that we that we trying to you offer. might see more in a suit 
Maybe. I can see it. I see. Yeah. I see kind of like a lot of reflections. City lights yes. hitting the. Yeah, the, like the you ever, you know, Men in Black, like Will Smith. I might pop out like that. Men in Black or Men in Black. Men in Black. Yeah, yeah I, I seen. Men, I seen the Men in Black. I ain't seen Men in Black. You, yet. you ever saw like those <laughs> those Christmas? <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> you ever saw those Christmas commercials where it shows like the guy getting out of a, a cab in front of a building? Yeah, yeah. Carrying yeah. Christmas bags. Yeah, and go, something like something that. Something similar to that. Or you should you should look into um, there's what's that car company uh with um. Matthew McConaughey, Bu- is it Buick? Have I seen those is commercials? I'm not. Bro, I, so sure. I used to study a lot of car commercials for like mm-hmm. car stuff, but you should you should look into those because those commercials are very like classic and clean. Definitely send those over. Yeah, yeah, Ray. I think, I think it's Buick or something like that. I'm not really sure what company he's. Uh, well, I told oh, Ray Lincoln. Lincoln, I yes. Lincoln. I'm sorry, Lincoln. Yeah, it's Lincoln. Lincoln, yeah. yeah. I told Ray Check pretty much mm-hmm. that I just wanna, I wanted to spend today offering Minty doing some uh, promotion with Minty and he then Friday me. the pickup. So he sent me the video idea. I fucked the video idea. I already had an idea in my head, but I fuck with his idea way more. You know? I mean, if you guys ever need help filming something, I do have, you know, I do have some cameras, you know, so if you need a second angle. But you're not, you're you not know, never in New York. Where are you going to be tomorrow? <laughs> I'm being in Philly. <laughs> exactly. What the fuck? <laughs> nah, I'd be, I'd be busy as hell. Yeah. I'd be busy as hell. But I could definitely help you out, you know, or maybe if you have any ideas. Yeah. Um, no, definitely. How you, but how you, you, see, you see people watching? This is what it's all about. I met these people from just being myself and they gravitated towards me. And now we here doing a podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I met Ray just from the car shit. Too, she was a customer. I'm still just, trying to get hired though. <laughs> <laughs> Is y'all niggas hiring? Too, I met from the car shit, you know what I'm saying? That we here together, you know, as a team. Yeah. Doing our shit. Yeah, like, I mean, that's why I said I came here because um, last year when I first started the podcast, I was like, I spoke to Thomas about it. He, you know, to be honest, he flaked out, but he moved also, so it wasn't going to work out. Yeah. And um, I was like, you know, I was like, if there's anybody I'm going to do this with, it probably I have to have a shop, obviously. Um, but I'm not just going to be in any shop because I know how people are on Long Island. Yeah. You know, so. You know, we're going to have to interview him. We don't have to what? Interview Does that interview him? me about? Yeah, we should interview I feel yeah. like I've already talked about my whole life throughout this whole podcast. Like, this is probably going to be episode number, bro, 15 or 18 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but you still Crazy. need an interview. 18. Yeah, I feel like you need an interview. There's an things interview. that I don't know about you that I would want to know. Yeah. Uh, how does Supra come about, you know? Yeah, I why Supra? I spoke about that in the last episode, too. But uh, I want more details. Yeah. What do you mean want more details? This time you're getting interviewed. Yeah, so yeah. with me, Next- I'm, I'm pretty honest about it. I'm not... So, look, I'm, for me, I'm honest about everything. I'm not fake flexing. I'm not the, the dude that's going to sit there and act like... Because when I got the suit, people thought I had money. Yeah. Like, oh, shit. Like, this nigga got money. Like, nah, bro. I just haven't had that's, a car for so long. That's how I feel like with a Maybach. Yeah, nah. I just haven't had you a car for years. Like, Yo, you got money now. You rich. No, nigga. Nah. I work. <laughs> Social media, man. The fuck? I work. Social media. I get up. Social media I work six that. days a week. I work seven days a week. I'm off on Sundays. I still have to answer the phone. I still have to answer the phone. I still have to make my appointments for Mondays. You know, yeah. you could post whatever you want on social media, but people will always put like uh, uh, you in a, a category yeah, like, or, yeah. or a category, yeah. right? Over it, whatever it is you. That's post. how I feel with me. That's why I always post. I be like, yo, even everybody, why, I'm a regular nigga. Like, rec- yo, if you ever catch me outside in my Maybach driving, I'm in regular clothes. I'm in my work clothes, even on my days off. Sundays on a dirt bike. Nah, I sold my dirt bike. You sold it? Yeah, Damn. that shit too dangerous. Yeah, it is. You got. You got I got way too much to live for. I do. I I take four wheelers though. Damn, nah, he, fuck he the finally bikes. caught fuck on the bikes. Period. You yeah, finally nah, caught nah. on to that, but you fell off, and that's what happened, or you just. I said, did fall. And is that why you saw my it? Ass. Nah, nah, nah. It's just too dangerous, literally. Yeah. Like it's literally too dangerous, you know, and you could get trapped up in it. It's, and I just told myself, like, damn. What really hit me was like, yo, if I when I fell, if I would have broke my fucking foot, right? The fuck would I be able to work? Right. I mean, you got employees. So. I like working. You know, I agree with you. I took bike lessons about two months ago, and I would have to say, you, you're right. You're 100% right. Bro, we be on law, the streets. We be in the city, and the way how these cops is moving, they hitting niggas off the bikes. I'm not trying to be one of them niggas. Yeah, he ain't and your bike was pretty there. brand new. My bike was brand new. I bought yeah. it for my birthday. How much you pay for the bike? 10. Uh, okay. Dirt yeah. bike. Yeah, so, a YZ250. 250? Yeah. 2021. Yeah, 2021. Yeah, I always wanted to get into. I mean, I, it's, cool. it's cool. Don't get but me wrong; it's so cool. I got work like, in the morning. 
Yeah, I know after yeah, seeing the so Meek cool. Mill movie, everybody wanted a bike. Nah, bro. it's yeah. not even that. I used to ride bikes when I was a little younger, and I was like eighteen. Yeah, but it became bikes. this whole thing with the whole. Now it's a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but it was so cool, bro. Like, like I don't know if you guys ever watched the Skitty Bang. Uh, yeah, the music video, Wop Wop. Like mm. he used my bike for that music video. Oh, word. Yeah, I didn't see you guys send out my gun zone. You know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's cool though. It's it's like it's like. When you ride a bike, it's like you just get away from everything. I've heard, I've heard that uh, it's a like lot a of people getaway, yeah. but it's just so dangerous, bro. It's like the way how the police are moving, at least in terms of right now. It's like it's not even worth it, bro. It's like, so I got, I got a, I got a question. You might not want to answer, but like, what are you putting in this stuff, this detail and stuff? What's, what am I putting in? Yeah, what you putting in there? What's the, what's the secret sauce? You definitely, bro. Not it's all me, trial and error. It's like as you go, you just find what works for you. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, uh, it just finally works for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just find, Bro, I use a lot of brands. I use chemical guys. I use So, okay. So when you when you start a business, you basically are using regular shit or you have to have mixtures of stuff cuz every time I get my car washed, that should be clean for a while. That's the and everybody else who washes my car, no disrespect to nobody, but it's just like I could do it myself and it won't look the same the next day. Bro, you know it's, it's all trial and error. You just find what what works, what what you see when I find something new, I try it on my car. And then I pay attention to how long this tire shine last on my car when I drove it back and forth to work. How long did, how long was my car clean when I washed it with this wax and that wax? And then when I find the, the you know, the formula, I just give it to the customers. That's the problem. Most people out there who are starting businesses, it's, it's like so easy for people to start detailing business now. And they just think that it's just washing cars. Nah, but it's, it's there's not. a difference in somebody it. like like yourself who's yeah. actually paying attention to certain chemicals, how long the tire shine stays on. That's what I actually look at. Yeah. When you said that, that's the first thing I look at. Cause yeah. if they're using regular bullshit, the next day it's like they never put tire Bro, shine on. When you come to my shop, I have rags for the interior only. I have rags for the outside only. I have rags for the rims only. I have rags for the door jams only. I have rags to dry the car only. Everything is separated by color yeah everything soap if your car ceramic coated i have a special soap a special wash mitten for your car bro it's more to it than just washing the car that's what that's what these niggas don't understand that's why when we, when you hear fifty dollars it's like oh fifty dollars oh it's too much yeah well, that fucker. video is actually <laughs> doing <laughs> like well. you know how much math and science and long studying bro you know how much time i spent on youtube like learning things and what not to use why not learning not only not 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 only learning like don't use this okay why not to use this i want to know why not to use this yeah you know how many times i watch videos and and bro hours hours years bro years this is not just something like oh i want to be a car wash to make money no i actually have a passion for this i'll tell you i'll tell you real quick where this passion came from uh when i was younger right my father he got deported when i was young where you from jamaica i'm jamaican <laughs> Yeah, big Jamaican. I was born here, but my parents are Jamaican. So my father, when he was up here, he told me, and I just found this out recently, I think last year, he told me that he used to work at a car wash mm. when he first came up here. Long story short, he came up, winded up selling drugs or whatever. Um, he would take me to the car wash by my house like two or three times a week. All, he had a, he always had a brand new car. So whatever whatever what, what year were we in twenty three, yeah. he would have that year car, and he would always keep it clean, always wash it. So I just came like, you know, I got used to like always being at the car wash, always seeing a car clean, to the point where when I got older, it's like you know it was already beat into me when I was a child. You know what I'm saying? So that's what kind of like made me stick with the whole car wash shit. How does he yeah. feel that you know you got your own thing? I mean, he in Jamaica, so he don't really know what I'm doing. He know I got a business, but it's like you've been in Jamaica for so long. He don't really know what I'm doing. He, I don't even think he know. He really, he really don't know what I'm doing. Like I got my own spot, you know what I'm saying? I got two cars and this and that. My business. He don't really like process. We don't really talk too much because once again, I'm not a braggy, braggy person. Like, yo, yeah, daddy, yeah. look, I open up a shop and I got this car and that car. You know, it's more so like if you find out, you find out, or you see it, you see it. You know what I'm saying? That's how I rock. Nah, facts, facts. It's a good so conversation. Got one okay. more question for uh, yeah, maybe a for couple. It. Yeah, go for maybe it. A couple. What's up? Now we know you like S two thousands. Yeah. What's the next car that you really love? 
because we know those we know these s2000s you had over the past couple of years helped you got to where you are today nah yeah definitely to be honest over the maybach i was supposed to get a porsche turbo s but it's right here nah i wish nah i can't get a, <laughs> i can't get a ver i gotta get a coupe um my next car really and truly and i'm gonna look the camera in its eye because i'm gonna get it and when i say i'm gonna get something i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get a gt3 rs Fire. not three? even a G- three rs rs three rs gt3 okay. rs i want to say i'm gonna get a gt3 rs i may shoot for a gt3 depending on how funds is looking you know if i make the smartest move because i want to keep my maybach so whatever car to get next i'm keeping my maybach and i got an m3 i'm keeping that too right so i really want a gt3 rs or just a gt3 now you know when you get the gt3 rs it's gonna put you in a different bracket of course of course co- bro getting the maybach put me in a different bracket yeah. of course is expensive bro, two man. two three weeks ago i was with meek mills rick ross and dj khaled in the city but you know the next day uh-huh. i was at little tj's album release party that's dope that's by dope. me having a maybach bro having this made back is like it's opening doors yo it's, it's so wavy doors. because it's like yo when i gers- when i go to certain spots yo people let me park in the front like yo keep your car right here when i went to little tj's album release party the person that owned we it was at brooklyn chop bro the nigga let me park wait in, in Times square yeah oh i've been there. he let me park right across the street i think there's an apollo yeah he yeah. let me park right there he said yo you can park your car right there i was about to pull into the parking lot and pay for parking yeah there's a parking lot right bro there. everywhere i go people want me to park my car yes i'm riding in luxury on friday yeah, well it makes them bro. look good though if they have you know of course like that, of course in front. of they course have dope cars i've seen a cullen in there one time um people shop house is always i've been there uh, uh, several times and of it's course, always bro. and then there. when you drive in certain cars like that that's what people don't understand like you put yourself in a different bracket definitely yeah you know what i'm saying you're now able to if you're smart you're able to network with these people if you talking to people you got a gt3 he got a gt3 you know he got money right what is it that you do buddy and the Porsche community <laughs> runs deep what too. you do buddy oh yeah. i do Porsche's da, 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 da. oh i do da, 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 da. boom let's do that together let's do this together let me put my business and your business together and boom you know a lot of people that's not into cars don't understand that when you nah, have a nice car it, it, it puts you in a scale and, a scale that right that you that's you so much opportunities you on it you don't even understand but well, that's part of the problem, though, because people think that they could just buy a car and buy their way into certain. I mean, you can, but some people take it to another level where they can't even afford the cars that they're. they're and it doesn't last, and it don't last. Nah, yeah, that's so why you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta move smart. You gotta move smart. You gotta have a purpose. But that's why I didn't doing. buy the Porsche, because the Porsche wasn't in my budget. The Porsche that I was looking at was like one thirty, and my cap was like a hundred. So why would I go spend thirty when I had a budget already? Yeah. And, like, what can't afford it or fight the payments you know i got my maybach and i can make my maybach payments and i'm i'm chilling you know what i'm saying so instagram instagram fucked up a lot of shit <laughs> instagram, instagram and, and covid so definitely. Instagram, media, man. instagram fucked up a lot of shit where a lot of niggas feel like they got to do certain things or look a certain way for other people I feel like it's changed a little bit though because I nah, feel like everything is I feel like it got worse. Yeah, year? I think it got worse. Really? It got worse, bro. Yeah. Maybe I don't pay attention enough because a I'm so focused. A lot of niggas, yeah, yeah, you don't really be on the gram like that. But a lot at least from people that I know, bro, a lot of people like a lot of people move away and I know that they don't got it. But if you didn't know them, you would think they got it. They got it. Yeah. Why you got to move like that? Who are you pro- you proving it to the 500 niggas that's viewing your, your pictures or the 500 niggas that you following that you moving like that in reality you know you lying to yourself you yeah. literally lying you, why why would you lie to yourself and don't, they don't yeah. even care that's the crazy that's what i'm saying they don't, that was, yeah exactly they don't they even say know. they say when you get when older I, you realize a lot of stuff you you held back on yeah you realize that people really don't care they didn't yeah. care at that time exactly you know? bro i feel like i moved the way i move and i moved the way i move to like show people like mm-hmm. yo it's more to life than just settling like there's a little bit more you know what i'm saying like as you being young you should push for more whether it is that you're in a business whatever it is that you're doing try to be the best at it because the life that we are living everyone that 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 that's watching this everyone that's here the life that we live in there's always better and everyone here deserves better everyone that's watching deserves better there's so much more to life than what and we like a lot of people don't even realize that like this 
so much more beyond cars and bro there's a certain level of comfortability so that's what you want to go to dubai and Nah, nah, you nah, want nah, to nah, hold nah, the, yeah, okay, okay, got it. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. But I definitely want the a big house, a nice house, yeah. bro. There's heated driveways and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah. bro. It's like there's so much more, bro. There's so much more. We we not even we so distracted with social media and we so distracted with impressing the other person that we don't even realize that it was really going on. Like you know what I'm saying, like it's you and your there's family. more. That's yeah. what, bro. That's why I get up and I work six days a week because there's more. I want more. I'm the only person in my family. I'm the youngest person in my family that's doing what I'm doing. I'm the I'm the only person in my family that's doing what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? A lot of my older people, my grandmother, my aunt, my mom, everybody always commend me. Yeah, I take the compliments, but I want to give compliments back. That's why I always tell people like, yo, do this, do that, be better, be do, do more, do more. Because there's more. There's always more, bro. Always more, always more. How you feel like you live and you feel like you're comfortable? Whatever bed you're sleeping on, bro, there's a better bed. Nah, 100%. I'm a definitely. Whatever lighting in your house, there's better lighting. Oh, hell yeah. Whatever pool you're jumping into, there's a bigger pool. Mm -hmm. And it's not saying like, oh, why do I need this? Why? It's not that you need. You deserve it. Everyone is a king and a queen. Everyone. Every single body is a king and a queen. Everybody deserves to royalty. Literally. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I live my life. That's why I work my ass off. You know what I'm saying? I don't work my ass off for no other reason but that. I got a kid. She's four. I want her to be as... She's already super duper comfortable, but <laughs> <laughs> I want her to be more comfortable, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I want her to be... I want her to see shit in the world that I wasn't even able to see. Bro, first of all, my daughter, she's four, right? She have been like, Mexico, Jamaica, the art, bro. My daughter been so much places and she's only four. I started traveling when I was 18. My daughter's four. I think I took her on her first vacation when she was two. She has her own room. She have a million sneakers, clothes, options, this, that, blah, blah, blah. Bro, that's the type of shit that, you know, as when you have your your, your, your seeds, that's you want to show them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's what you look Everyone watching, to. like, yo, always push for more, always do more. Like you can't figure it out. Maybe it's not meant for you to figure it out right now. But don't give up. Facts. Some shit gonna happen. Look at Ray. He was definitely trying to do that for a scene. Look know? at Ray. Ray. <laughs> <laughs> he said like, clip bit. that up. Yeah, <laughs> clip it up. Look at Ray, man. Ray, look, I'm so I'll be so proud of Ray. Sometimes I sit down, I'm on scrolling on IG. Sometimes I text him random. I'm like, yo, I'm proud of you, bro. Or I hit him up on IG, like, yo, I'm proud of y'all. Keep going. It's like to see where he was shooting from with the little iPhone. I'm gonna show you the video. I think I got it. <laughs> yeah, the phone. iPhone video was crazy. <laughs> Me watching Yo. the car, you know, to see where he at now when he didn't give up. He stood. He stood like consistent. He didn't give up, and look where he at today. I'm not saying he a big movie producer. You know, who knows what the next two three years might offer him. Yeah. But I'm definitely proud of. He got bookings. He doing weddings. He doing pitches. He doing this. He doing that. He staying busy. Ray Ray you, NYC Productions. Ray appreciate NYC. That, appreciate that. Make sure y'all but follow you know him. What? If it wasn't for this interview, bro, I completely forgot about that video. <laughs> what video? Oh, I completely the forgot about that video. Yeah, I got that shit still. If if I'm not lying, that's probably my first video I ever recorded. Really? And chopped up. It's with the big dog. With the big dog. And it dog. was good. It was good. I think it was to a Meek Mill song. I don't remember. It was decent. It wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was decent. Man. It was fire. It was fire at that. the time though. At the time, definitely yeah. before Instagram and this vertical, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Was which thing? I, which I actually like the vertical. It's definitely changed like a lot for me. Yeah. Made my job easier because that full video crap. A lot of people thought they were bigger than they were and say, "Oh, I want a video on YouTube," and they don't even understand how YouTube works. You can't just throw mm-hmm. a video up there and go viral. So it was a lot more work for the YouTube stuff. And then, oh, make one for Instagram. It's like, bro, you don't even care about YouTube. Why are we gonna post a video here? Yeah. I could talk about that stuff all day long with the help. When That's it comes why to we're home. gonna interview. You. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to like the the production stuff, but um, but yeah, bro, this has been great. This is a great conversation. It's been a long overdue. I know yeah. this guy was harassing me. Yo, when we gonna do my interview, bro? For real. When we gonna do my nah? And we actually did your interview, but um, it, it was just that good. That was actually, you know, what's funny? That was the first episode we filmed, and you were supposed to be the guest, and yeah. we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and I just didn't release it because it just it was terrible. Yeah, yeah it wasn't <laughs> it was really terrible. like yeah, it wasn't really hitting. It wasn't, and I think that you were disappointed because like, yeah, I need a better intro than that. Yeah. You know, but honestly, for me, like, 
the chemistry on set i guess yeah. is more so like like you ask questions i've never been like you've never been in this position where we're both interviewing somebody right. um so it's much better because then i don't have to you know what i'm saying you you, you feed off bounce off each other you know right. what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. but so tell the viewers where to find you uh my business pages is minty pick me up minty detailing everything minty um my regular page is unknown mar u-n-k-n-m-a-r i thought it was unkmar nah unknown oh. <laughs> you know, like, yo. his name in my phone is still his old instagram name low key mar low key oh, mar yeah, yeah, yeah it was mad I thought it was unkmar nah you uh, gotta bring back the cigarettes i got them every every now and then when i'm stressed out <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll pop them out <laughs> yo I, out I was crying when i saw that these stories yeah. with that but yeah that's where y'all can find me at once again those that's viewing I really want you guys to uh, appreciate the time that my man Tooks came, uh, Tooks takes to chop up these videos and drop these videos. You know, it's not easy. A lot of time on the computer. Always give shout out to uh, the director, the producer, you pretty much everything. Yeah. Well, my girl's oh, kind of producer too. She comes shout up out with to her too. Just Thank up. you, Ray, for coming, taking your time and being here. 100%. He be doing behind the scenes too. Yep, yep. Yeah, we got to get those. I, I I need some flicks, but... Well, the last session was on my time camera. You, yeah, but you took like so. three... Yo, this guy took three photos and dipped. I, I was in get, a rush. I didn't even get them, man. He said, poop, poop. All right, bro, I'm out. And then don't, all, don't worry, four of them were out of focus, so, I, you know. Don't worry. Your interview, what? I got you. <laughs> what? Your interview, my, I got you. Nah. Nah, well, it depends who else comes here. I know yeah. we're going to have some heavy hitters coming soon, so... True. Um, But yeah, I definitely need some photos so I can post on the page. Nah, it was, it was fun working with you on this set. I learn a lot. Always learn a lot from other content creators and, you know, videographers, camera, anybody that picks up a camera and they're really good. Yeah. You know, know how to shoot, know the game, even if they've been yeah, in the you game gotta longer than me. you got to give my man You got to give yourself some flowers, bro. Me? Yeah, nah. I try tweets. not to. I try to stay focused, bro. Because I, I, I get bored. When did I meet you? Um, like 2020, right? You said how old is he? No, when did I meet him? I think oh. you met me... He's 47. I don't even know. Say I'm 47. <laughs> 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 when did you meet me? Uh... Oh, it was at an event, but I think that was 2020. It was a while ago. It was 2020, definitely. And then after that, we connected on Instagram, and I saw his work. I saw it, I actually seen his work before that. Oh, I yes. I was just like, yo, this guy Oh, is I legit. met you at the, at the baby shower I did, right. or the gender reveal, whatever it was. And I, I seen his work on Instagram. I'm like, yo, this guy's legit. Yeah. Appreciate legit. It. That was a while ago. Damn. Yeah. And then the car stuff, I started doing that. And then that's when we kind of really, you know what I'm saying, started Shout out to more. Tooks, man. Tooks Shout out to Tooks. Appreciate Tooks it. Tooks Appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, hopefully we can see you on, on, on set more as a co-host for sure. You're next. I know a lot of people reached out to be a co-host, but, like, a lot of people have to understand that it's not something that you could just get on here and talk shit. And it's, it's, it's work. It takes time to set this up. So if you're going to come on here and think you could just interview somebody and have fun with this, it's not a joke, really, because you're wasting a lot of people's time. But um, appreciate y'all. This is a dope episode. Make sure you guys are listening on all streaming platforms. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you guys subscribe, more importantly. Appreciate you guys, and we will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.